What's up? What's up? <laughs> Tanner, thank you for doing this, bud. Yeah, man. It's been, uh, I don't know if we've ever really sat down and talked long. No. We've always just been in passing. Yeah. Things like that. So, so glad you reached out to me, man, because like I said, yeah. it's uh, sometimes I forget how many awesome people are in Dallas alone, just DFW alone, to kind of sit down and do these podcasts with. Yeah. So appreciate it. For sure. Well, shit, man, what have you been up to? How, how how long have you been into the like the paint world, just the custom paint stuff? This year, actually, is yeah. 20 years. God damn, 20 seriously. years, yeah. And it all started with pinstriping, mm-hmm. you know, and then I, like, slowly introduced everything, every other Everything aspect. else, yeah. Yeah. What was the... Minus uh, airbrushing. What was the... What was the thing that made you want to start pinstriping in the first place, like... Uh, I think that I was always, your face a little bit. I was always um, artistic. Yeah, and I loved hot rods. Mm. Kind of just like what so when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I gotta try this. Yeah, and then like I never stopped. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people that I've met that are kind of more traditionally pinstripe artists have found it through the rat rods, the hot rods, and that kind of culture. I think that's where um, it started. Yeah, man, I don't, low I, riders. Honestly, low riders. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Where I started, where this passion of mine custom paint mm-hmm. started was the late 80s mm. lowrider magazine um i was obsessed with the paint jobs danny yeah. d danny d yeah danny d um that was that's probably my first yeah inspiration of custom paint because he had those cars he painted in lowrider magazine in the late 80s mm-hmm. which is, which was really cool it's really sad about his situation but he over the years, he would repost or he would post those pictures of those cars that I saw. Yeah, as a and I'm recent, like, yeah. oh my gosh, that like that tugs at my you back strings. To childhood. Oh my gosh, like big time. I used yeah. to ride my bike to the Winn Dixie, you know, like <laughs> and buy. I would save up and like buy a, a lowrider magazine, and I also loved looking at the lowrider bikes. Yeah, the bicycles was a thing too for a yeah, hot minute, for man. Sure. Yeah, and I remember I wanted one of those fuckers. They used to in the lowrider yeah. magazines. They'd can have you ride them where you them? can. You could uh, buy like a kit one that you can build yourself. They had hydraulics. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, how cool! When you're a kid, you're like, man, I can never, I don't, I can't have the car with hydraulics, but I can have the bike. That's the one awesome thing about the lowrider culture is that it's really, it's really something that the whole family can get involved in yeah. in the building process, mm-hmm. and then your kids, you can get them involved in the lowriders, and even the shows have classes and stuff for the mm-hmm. the, the bicycles and the kids coming up. Yep, it's such a, it'll bring you up that way. Yeah, they uh, they all have those like the strollers and everything. And the mm-hmm. other pedal cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah pedal so, cars. That's yeah. another one. Yeah, but the culture has always been awesome. I think in the yeah. rider, you know. But yeah, that's kind of where it started, really, for me. Yeah, I, I can see that. I think when I started looking at low riders back in the day, I was just I had just got old enough to drive, mm-hmm. and I was looking at those. You know, they'd always have the wheel. Like catalog inside there of all the different wheels. Oh yeah, and I'd be trying to get those assassins, bro. You remember those in Lowrider magazine? Yeah, because yeah, they'd yeah. have all the wheels. This is before like it turned into like big ass wheels. It was like mostly yeah. like it was like roadsters, twenties tops, McLean. Yeah. Well, I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm talking about like, I'm I'm thinking about like Dayton's and. I mean, that was always a thing. Like, like getting a set of Dayton's or someone would have been the shit. Especially, you know, I. I I'm 39, so when I started getting into cars, it was like 98, 99. Uh-huh. And I still kind of wasn't really into it the way that I'm sure you were. Yeah. I was just kind of like, I have a car. So yeah. how can I make this a little bit more cooler mm-hmm. to appease or to get some attention put you from a little, women? You put know you a mean? little tip on that? Little, yeah. Little, exhaust tip for Pet Boys? Well, then you start drilling out. Like when I <laughs> – I think I remember I had a – you remember when the side marker lights were a thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. And everybody yeah. would drill the side the of the, yeah. the, the, the fenders and putting the lights on the yeah. side and shit? Dude, I had a neon uh, a neon shift knob. <laughs> hey, the cords, like, coming out the bottom of the shift knob and, like, wrapped around the shifter and, like, going up to the cigarette lighter. <laughs> and you just got to plug to Yeah, so turn it on, you go plug in. Wow. Like, I never had a car that had a cigarette lighter that worked because every time somebody would – put like a radio in their car back then they always cut the cigarette lighter wire because yeah, yeah. it was a constant power i think mm-hmm. and people would always mangle up wire harnesses trying to put radios in them and shit and then somebody got smart one day and started making wire harnesses for different radios mm-hmm. and that was like a game changer dude so yeah. they're crutch filled or yeah. some shit my yeah. uh 1989 ford taurus cigarette lighter worked nice 
<laughs> like an anomaly. <laughs> Man, I, I, I didn't, I don't know what it was like, you know, because I grew up in a body shop, right? Uh-huh. So I was around it, but I just never, I wasn't around cool shit. I was around collision work when I was growing up. Yeah. So I looked at that place like it was a dirty fucking mess. Like I didn't want to be in there sanding and doing all that stuff. You saw it. There definitely. was never cool cool cars in there being yeah. built. Um, Repairing the Civic. Yeah, that and fucking. Camry. So, yeah, just cars that, like, why did they repair that? Why, just fucking throw it away. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I don't know. So what was it like? How do you even, like, at that time find out about pinstriping and get into it? Was there, like, catalogs or some kind of place that you can go to back in the day? It was magazines, dude. For it was real? just, like. It was just random, like, hot rod magazines. And I saw this stuff, and I, I honestly, I didn't know what it was at first. Yeah. You know, when I first started seeing actual pinstriping designs, mm-hmm. I didn't even know what it was. I'm like, what is that, a sticker? Mm-hmm. You know, when I was young. And then I worked at a sign shop, um, like... Doing vinyl stuff, or yeah, actually... Okay. Yeah, yeah. And this, yeah, yeah. In, like, I don't know, late 90s. And my buddy Mac, he was like, oh, that's pinstriping. You get this, like... you like... It's like a pinstriping brush, and you do it by hand. I go, nah. And then he, and so he, so he ordered one. Mm-hmm. And I guess this has been around two thousand or so. Yeah, around that. And he ordered he and he got one, a pinstriping brush and a can of one shot. Mm. And we're like over there, like I wish I like actually I do. Oh, I do still have those panels somewhere of us like first like Pull our lines. first. Like, brush on a panel, like, on anything is the worst thing ever. <laughs> but it's cool to look at and be like, yeah. oh, whoa, come a long way. When I first, you know, I got inter- introduced to it working at Gary's shop and yeah. being around the custom paint stuff. But, man, the first time I picked up a brush, I thought, in theory, it was going to be easy yeah. to pull a straight line. Yeah, yeah. Dude, not fucking yeah. easy at all. Mm. There's just so much of a... Becoming one with the brush That's, and the paint. That is 100%. You know what I mean? And it's so, and and it may sound kind of silly, but it's so important to palette. Yeah. The paletting is, I tell people, it's probably the most important part. Because mm-hmm. if the paint's not right, it's never going to lay down right. Yeah. You you could feel it. Like, I, I think yeah. over the years, I mean, I that's, pinstriping's always been my least skilled thing that I'm good at, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's because it's, I don't do it every day. It you know took what I mean? so much. Yeah. It, you know, like how people ask me, like, how, how did you get good at doing that? Well, I like didn't go to the bars. I yeah. didn't go drink and party. Mm-hmm. I just never did that. I always wanted to like, I always had this like urge to do something. I don't creative. Know you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative, uh, productive. I don't know. I really, mm-hmm. I, that answer, I don't know. It's kind of a gray area on that, but. Yeah. So like you jumped in the sign shop. What about, uh, like, the the other thing is the – I don't know what your – what is your involvement with um, Bomb Squad and that whole thing? Like, um, Bomb Squad is something that me and my best buddy Wes mm-hmm. owned. Okay. Um, it was downhill skateboarding, mm-hmm. and which is kind of weird because we're in Texas. <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> but we would travel. Yeah. And it was a good time. Um, it was a really – really amazing time but doing all that i still always painted like yeah. i never stopped i never even like for a second stopped painting the skateboard cult- culture really lends itself to the art culture yeah exactly i mean decks yeah. have always been like an expression piece yes. whether I, I don't know so much about the longboarding scene Same. but Same. i'd imagine yeah. and then you guys also had wild ass helmets look like space balls oh man they do totally <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I still wear that thing too. <laughs> it wasn't that drastic. Yeah, it wasn't as bad. But and it's carbon fiber. Mm. But I, I would, I said the same. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what How I do you even practice? You just do like the, uh, like parking garages and shit like that. Yeah, like try yeah, to yeah. bomb down those. And parking things. garages. There's hills here. Honestly, there are hills. There's here. some in Arlington. I remember. Yeah, I used to see and people there's go to. in West Fort Worth. There's some in Austin. There's big ones. Mm. Um, the hill country. Just, I mean, you, there, there were places to get good and then you go take it somewhere else california or colorado yeah and you talk about some fun it's just wild it's it's one of those like things on facebook when you're scrolling down you see someone bombing you're like like, okay that's crazy is he gonna wreck in this one or is he just gonna pull it off and it's always like a fun thing but the wrecks look fucking scary dude Oh, the guardrail is your worst enemy for real 
Everything else you can pretty much handle if you're sliding or whatever. Yeah. But, man, those guardrails, they don't care if you're wearing leathers or not. Dude, the sickest thing, though, is whenever they start trying to, like, lose a little bit of speed and they start going sideways. Yeah, drifting. They call it drifting. That shit's fucking player as hell, dude. Oh, dude, yeah. You have to. You have Mm -hmm. to do it. I mean, if you don't do that, you are going to go into that guardrail. (laughs) Yeah, that shit was fun. That was a that was a real fun time in my life, honestly. How was it taxing, like, on your body as far as, like, oh, you know, man. being fit enough to be able to do that kind of stuff? I mean, I imagine um, there's still some kind of athleticism to it. Oh, definitely. Um, wrecking, and I mean, I broke. I don't know. Do you remember when I had that broken arm? I mean, hell, that's been 12 years, probably 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. But I had a broken arm. Were you still striping with it? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Actually... And I probably shouldn't be saying this on here. I still did jobs. Mm-hmm. I did them left-handed. I did. And people were like, oh, cool. I love it, man. Good thing you didn't break that arm. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've tried to practice airbrushing left-hand before, like just doing like basic drop shadows, things like that, just to see if I can. It's odd. If I could do the, if you have to think about pulling an airbrush gun and trigger back and forth, then you're never going to be good at doing it yeah, because right. it, this has to be second nature. Yeah, it has to be natural. And so when you're doing anything with your left hand, you think so much about the movements mm-hmm. that you don't focus as much on what you're actually doing. It's like right. when you try to hit, like, the punching bag machine with your left hand. You're thinking about your left hand so much, like, is this filled the right way? Like this. And then you just, like, have this really feminine swing. <laughs> so, well, like, you're, like, on this, your normal hand, you're, like, oh, yeah. And then this. <laughs> exactly. It's a fucking, it's, yeah. Unfortunately, I've got friends with right arm that are right-handed and that still swing their right hand that way. But uh, you know, <laughs> bless their heart. But no, that's a uh, I don't know, man. Like the skate, I, I skateboarded when I was young, but we just did street stuff back in the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we would bomb like some of the garages down in downtown Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially late at night, go there about two a.m. and skate till the sun come up. Yeah, and that's um, shit. yeah, dude, sit on top of a parking garage when the sun's coming up. Eating some donuts that you yeah. got at the place down the street. Dude, it's fucking Same. the shit. We used to do that every weekend. Go to all the parking garages and skate all night. And then just, I mean, we would skate late. Yeah. But good, that was a fun time for sure. Did you only do longboarding or did you also do normal, like, just regular When I was skating? younger, I did street skating. Mm-hmm. I was never really that good at it at all. Yeah. But um, I, I grew up, you know, I grew up doing that and uh, BMX. Nice, nice. When you, so you said you've known Dan, Danger Dan for a long time. Like, how? When did y'all first meet? Man, we probably first met, and I think the first time I met him was probably in 07. For real? Yeah, skating. Damn. That's how I met him, dude. I had picture. Oh, I wish I, I should get some pictures out. He he looked like a little kid. He doesn't dude. look as all chopular as he looks now. Nope, not chopular. Did you take a shower? No, still didn't shower. <laughs> still could smell his ass. That's his thing. Yeah. He leaves his mark everywhere he goes. He's consistent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, no, nah, one of my favorite dudes, honestly. Mm-hmm. This, I mean, if you're having a bad day and that guy's around, like, and you're still having a bad day, there's something really wrong. Yeah, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's right. not him. It's not him. No, nah, he's, he's got a great outlook on life, man, the way he's – his the way his podcast has blossomed yeah. into – what it's become, you know, just being able to yeah. see him from like early days when he first started it and how it's turned into this. I mean, this dude's already ridden around the world, not literally around, but he's so ridden cool. in other parts of the world now. Yeah. So I'm super jealous of this dude, but yeah. also <laughs> super proud of him. Oh, totally. You know I, mean? I mean, dude, I saw this. I saw this dude. He was a kid. I mean, he was a kid. I mean, he was, God, I don't know how old he is now, but I feel like when I met him, he was like 19 or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Yeah. But he was noticeably young, young looking. And at one time we were skating a garage in Dallas, actually, the one with the big like composer painted on the side. Oh yeah, yeah. So we were in there, and that was probably this is probably oh eight, and we we're like flying down. There's probably like twenty of us in there, and we're like, I mean, these longboards are on, like they're not little short decks with hard wheels. Yeah, you're like hauling ass, dude. So one guy kind of like. Cut him off a little bit. I mean, this is all an accident. There's, this is not like we're yeah. trying to like. Hey, oh yeah, I didn't fight on the way down. No, I wasn't like <laughs> whatever, whatever. The, but yeah, he uh, he got off his line mm-hmm. and he hit a concrete pillar, and he freaking his his shin just went like that, and dude, his leg completely broke like that. Fuck. And we had to carry him out of the garage. It was the craziest. You know, man, you can't imagine seeing Dan. 
and just screaming in pain. Yeah. He, he was screaming in pain. And wow. that screwed him up for a long time. And then, like, dude, this I, I, feel, I feel bad talking about this, honestly. So then he finally, like, months later, he finally, like, oh, I can walk. I can walk again. I mean, he had, like, rods put in. Yeah. All kinds of shit. And um, he came out to one of our skate sessions, right? Mm -hmm. He came out, and he was like, oh, man, I miss this. You know, he's, like, hobbling. And he's, like, posted up on this, like, electrical box and watching us all, like, skate. Yeah. And, like, so... A, f a few people come down, you know, and I think, I think I'm kind of by Dan at this time. I wasn't, I wasn't actually skating down. I was just kind of talking to him. And then like a group comes down. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for him. The group comes down, they crash. A board comes and hits Dan right in the leg. <laughs> Rebreaks it. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> it, the break wasn't as bad, yeah. but he had to go straight to the hospital. Wow. His first time just, back just out. Just fucking watching. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that has never happened ever since That's I've like been the around. universe telling him, like, hey, bro, hang it up. So Stay off a board. Don't even come back over here. Yeah. And I'll tell you, he still got back on a board. He still did. I mean, maybe a couple of years he still skated, but then he got over it and got into motorcycles. Every once in a while, like, I just want to go drop in on a on a mini ramp just yeah. to see if I still got that. I as long as I that. have that, yeah. I'm good. Like, yeah. I feel like... <laughs> That's the party trick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. As long as you got that, you're good. People believe that you actually did skate at some point. They don't have to, yeah. you don't have to do a kick flip or anything like that. Uh -huh. Just something basic. Just like, oh man, that's cool. That's cool. Like, yeah. I got, that's, yeah. I well, can't, I can't really do that, but. So how long were you pinstriping before? Cause you worked at uh, Iron Horse, right? Mm -hmm. And for those listening, Iron Horse was like in the chopper days was a production motorcycle building company that had a yeah. full paint shop it with was a unique stripers deal. airbrush artists graphic artists painters builders everything it was and, so strange actually uh -huh. it was like a cubicle i had a cubicle yeah you know like most people sit it there and at a desk yeah i'm sitting at a desk but it's a motorcycle in front of me and i'm painting it mm. or doing layout or whatever yeah mostly just uh pinstriping I feel like that would – I never got to experience that because I came into the scene a little bit on the downward uh, slope of the of that whole chopper craze. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just when I would listen to, like, you and Mike Sissel yeah. and, fuck, Shane used to airbrush mm -hmm. there, like, all these people that kind of came through the whole uh, – the basically the school of Iron Horse, basically, as the custom painters would say here. We had a shit ton of people in Dallas worth painting for a while. And Especially when yeah. that shut down, there was oh, a dude. fucking something yeah. something customs on every block. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. There's was it a uh, who's the other guy like Car Carlos or Juan or something Juan like that? Juan still yeah yeah he still does still that. Does but see Juan actually, um, I think Juan left years a few years before they closed down. Yeah, and started his own deal. Uh, or no, he worked at uh, Rutgers. Rutgers, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and then he started his own deal after that. But, yeah, and then, like, Rick Rick and Kevin started mm -hmm. their own thing. Rick was the pinstriper, right? Rick was, like, Rick could do everything, yeah. but he was the uh, the boss. Oh, okay. He was, like, he was over everybody. Rick Dubstat. Dubstat, there. Yeah. Good How, guy. What was, the, uh, what was the vibe like going to, like, clocking into a place where you basically do art yeah, all day dude, long? It is, or at least, I feel like that would be the best training ever. Dude, you talk Repetitive. about... A crash course yeah. in every aspect of painting. Everything. It was actually very cool. Mm -hmm. And it taught me a lot about paint. And it taught me a lot. Of, it made you good because you're literally, you're going like you say. You go and you clock in. You have this freaking thing. Beep. There's a line of people waiting to do the same thing. And you go and there's a, there's a paint department. And it's, like, massive. There's, like, ten booths. Nice. And there's, like, five little mini booths, you know. Every one was for a different color, a different metallic, white, black, clear. Inner there's a booth for inner coat only. Wow. I mean, it's crazy. And you go in, and you're, like, you have your cubicle. You know, right next to me was, like, one of my good buddies who I still talk to, Michael. It's funny. His name is Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. One of the best guys ever. So funny. His sense of humor is the best. Um. And, you know, you, you just, like, you just fuck around all day. You just, like, talk shit to each other and, like, try to scare each other so you'll mess up. <laughs> and, and keep in mind, when we're doing all of this pinstriping, mm -hmm. it's all on inner coat. It's all on base coat. Yeah. There's no, we don't, we, I never did one thing on top of clear there. Ever. 
And you're working for eight plus hours a day with that damn brush. And these fucking gaudy those tanks, tanks, dude. I would love to have one of those tanks to just do a custom paint job to hang up in here. Dude, or you something. need a forklift to get it up here. <laughs> hey, those <laughs> things right there, they're, they're sharp. Yeah. They're like, dude, you'll impale yourself on holding that thing. You used to have to, like, make custom little bolt holders to go into the tank because yeah. they had those, like, invisible yes. uh, yeah. uh, mounting things on the bottom. Yep. And, and you'd have to fucking put them in a weird spot, and you'd always be clearing those tanks where the tank's yeah. upside down yep. Yep. almost or some shit. It's, it's fucking wild. But There was a time, too, where I'd paint by, I painted bikes, and we would load the, uh, a booth up, sometimes two right next to each other. Mm -hmm. We would probably, I would probably spray ten bikes at one time. Wow. And they're all the same color, yeah. you know, and you just do a different color the next day. You're doing, like, the frame and all, or do the tins and things like that? Um, the frames, um, no, the frames were done from somebody else. Okay. It, it, there was a whole department for frames. Mm. There was a whole body shop. There was just everything. This was just tins. Yeah. And, you know, if it was a single color, you know, I would do that, and then, then somebody else was clearing it. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of cool, honestly. It was just like, go in there and like boom done you think like one strike. person would sit in one department and go man i really want to be the fucking base coder today or the pin yes, you know what i mean and that, get like yes. tired of that one job for sure and that yeah for sure and that and that's a, like if the more you could learn the yeah the more valuable you were you could move all around and be like trading your lunch with somebody like hey man can I, you want to go today for a base coat yeah like yeah let me let me stripe today you come base coat it's yeah. Break this thing up a yeah, little yeah. bit, you know what I mean? But I always like doing the custom part of it. Yeah. You know, like that was really the, my favorite. What Sissel used to do with the, uh, basically the one-off yeah, jobs where like someone would come in, I want fucking Marilyn Monroe, yeah, you know, doing uh -huh. this or that. And like he would be the one doing these fucking massive art projects basically. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I I worked in a, in a room with Sissel for years yeah. and I've heard the stories <laughs> of this Did man you? talk about how he... Got into it with one of them and just drew a fucking smiley face on one and said, buck "That's teeth, what you get." Buck teeth. Yeah. <laughs> it was he. He did a skull mm -hmm. with fucking huge buck teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I he mean, just he, put, he put time into that. <laughs> a little bit, That's a little bit of design work. Sissel, dude. Sissel's great. I would say the same reason, you know, because I feel like when I first picked up the airbrush thing, it came pretty quick to me. Uh, Mainly because working at, at the shop at Gary's at yeah. Other Side Customs, I, it was kind of like that. It wasn't as, like, it wasn't as much as the way it was at Iron Horse with you guys, yeah. but I went in every day. I sat in this airbrush room with Sissel. It, it actually is very similar there. Yeah. yeah. And I would, all right, today I am airbrushing uh, pirate skulls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so every day you're airbrushing these things that are not necessarily things I'm choosing the airbrush. Yeah, yeah. And so it kind of forces you to kind of figure out how to do all these different things. And mm -hmm. obviously, sometimes with that, you you probably don't do as well at certain things as you would at others. Yeah. And like I said, how nowadays we kind of pick the things we want to kind of, ah, I'm better at doing this. Yeah. yeah Leave yeah. that for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, that was, a, that was a crash course, man. Like going every sure. day. Yeah, yeah. Every day I was picking up an airbrush and doing something with it. And it... Uh, it, it gave you years and years and years more uh, experience than, yeah. you, than you than the actual time itself. I would say, I mean, if you think about it, like the average guy that wants to get into something like striping or airbrushing yeah. or doing more one of those little more fine tuned parts of the custom paint process, mm -hmm. um, it's muscle memory, man. Yeah. If you if you can just hurry up and get ten thousand hours with a pinstripe brush in your yeah. hand mm -hmm. or an airbrush or tape. And lining out graphics, like... And all those are 10,000 hours. Exactly. Separately. Each one. So... Yes. And, like, I kind of... Like, I, I, I pride myself a little, like, you too. Like, you can do all of it. That's yeah. cool. And that's what I shoot for. Um, I don't know about you, but I go through these, like, these times where I'm, like, so motivated. And I'm, like, I ache to paint. Yeah. And then there's other times where I'm, like, fuck this, man. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. But so, I always do it. I, I have to. At this point, I have to. I'm yeah. not educated. You know, I have no choice. <laughs> but I still have those feelings. I don't know if you do. But yeah, dude, it's, a, it's the emotional roller coaster of the custom paint industry. Well, you know, what it is in our situation is to be creative, you have to be motivated. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not motivated, it's hard to actually force yourself to be creative. Yeah. It's a struggle that I have and I've had for a long time. And, like, Sometimes these you know, this stuff has to get done, and you're just like, man, you gotta dig deep. 
God, yeah. you got to dig deep. You're like, oh, just do it and do it and don't and make it right. Do it, you know, give people what they what they're wanting. Well, I think sometimes you, you we when you do when you add a tool to the tool chest, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's a style of paint you're doing, or yeah. you know, like you just get good at this one thing, mm-hmm. and then you kind of use that tool a lot to the point where either a you get bored of it mm-hmm. or it's not popular anymore like yeah. it was like real fire or some shit like that yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and then you have to uh constantly reinvent yourself in this industry mm-hmm. like you do you do i mean you've been around in the dallas forward scene long enough to realize this in the nine in the 2000s it was airbrush heavy uh-huh Everybody wanted, like, being an airbrush guy, you were set. You were doing something. I could go to the, any lowrider shop yeah. in Dallas and do something. I can go to any bike shop and do something. Mm-hmm. And then around 2012, 13, 14, it started to transition more to the leafing, yeah. the more panel graphics, uh, and striping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, then it's your turn to kind of shine. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Now I'm like, fuck, I got a skill that I barely use anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? yeah. Understood. And I remember I remember having this conversation with you one time years ago. And I'm like, I felt so bad that I felt so loyal. Remember we talked about leafing and you and you asked me what was a spinning tool? Yeah. This was before you could buy it on every freaking corner. Yeah. And I was like, I want to tell you, but I can't. I was t- I was told not to tell anybody. Yeah. That, for I, a while, it was I genuinely was like felt that. bad about that. Yeah. Genuinely, no. That's how it was for a while because, uh, like I said, when the when when people went from using the velvet turning yeah. into the sandpaper thing, uh-huh. it was it was like classified information. It was for a lot of people. Yes, I actually uh, one of my friends, uh, Paint by Lemon, out of uh, uh, Tennessee's like Nashville area. Dude, that guy skates. He does. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Yeah yeah. Yep. I met him at uh, Easy Rider show in like 2014 or 15. And we started talking, and it's like we fo- we followed each other, but we didn't know what yeah. the fuck we looked like. Like, uh-huh. so once we realized who we were on on social media, we're like, we just fucking sat there and talked for the rest of the night. Yeah. And he was trying to get the leafing down too, and I was like, man, like I think they're using sandpaper. So this dude went and bought everything that could possibly. He was buying like SOS pads, like yes, everything yeah, to yeah. see if it'll turn. And then leaf. it's just like, and then he found the thing. He's like, uh, use this. And do that, and then he started like making some little dials of uh, his own little turning tools. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he told me, and there's still like even with even with everything laid out, it's still not like you gotta you gotta mess with it. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, even sometimes I still fuck up. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes I'm still like, fuck, do I know how to do this? Like, <laughs> what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? Well, you know, with the weather, right? That's what I say. With the weather, that shit changes like that, dude. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? I just did this other part, and it's like perfect. Oh wait, it started raining. You know, you're in a climate controlled area. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It knows. Yep, it's weird. It's just there to fuck you. It's to keep you on your toes, That's is what right. it is. That's right. If it was easy, everybody would do it. I feel like uh, so. I feel like was it Loki that really had it dialed in the first? Yes. His shit looks like dude. If you just turned some CDs upside down and threw yeah, them down yeah. a table, and they just all lined up together, it's what dude, it looked his like. His talent is so good. Yeah. It's insane. Oh my god! Hey, you could do. You could tell that dude to be like, "All right, hey, do this like crazy paint job using this stuff you've never used and this gun that you've never used and all this crap you've never. You don't even know what it is. He'll do it and it'll be better than you. Yeah. he's he's a he's a natural true artist. I mean, oh, I, I sure. watching him go from striping to tattooing and now airbrushing, and and it's seamless. Yeah, and there it fucking ne- works. It was like never. There was never like a learning curve. Like I met. If there was, he didn't show us. Oh, dude. But I feel like what he did was it it just kind of all seemed like it came naturally. He is naturally gifted for sure. And like I met that dude at the first Autorama. We were at the Autorama where the first panel gem, which has been twelve years ago, maybe. Yeah. And like he was he was twenty years old or something. Mm -hmm. And like then he was just as good. He was? Yeah. Nice. I'm like, what? Like, I mean, this dude, like, you, I mean, you, you you see it, and he's like, he gets better, but then you look at his old stuff, you're like, well, God, that's not much better. It's still, like, amazing back then. And, like, yeah. I don't know. I see that stuff, and I'm just like. 
amazing. Some people just got it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I've, I don't know. His his stuff is. I've always. I'm a huge purple fan. Yeah, and he, yeah. He puts purple yep. in the right places at the right times, uh-huh. and it's always kind of just. And been, he's got a mix of purple too. Yeah, he mixes couple That's different cool. shades and stuff mm-hmm. like that so every one of my personal helmets and personal bikes always has a purple stripe in it uh-huh. um it's just i've just my That's my color thing. you know yeah, what i mean it's for sure it's one of those things i i find a way to make it work with every color scheme yeah and it kind of helps define your own style or whatever the case for may sure. be but yeah. yeah yeah i mean his style man the panel jams all that stuff that the pinstriping thing i think is the one job or the one skill within the whole gambit of skills that you need to be a true custom painter mm-hmm. that ha- gives you the most freedom to basically be able to do your job anywhere for the most part. Yeah. Um, and you can finish the job in the same day and go home and get paid. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, the instant gratification. <laughs> yeah. When you, when, but I will say when you get into the big heavy leaf jobs, mm-hmm. those sometimes will take a couple of few days. Yeah. Yeah. But they're so rewarding though. I mean, you do them and you're like, I find myself like doing these big leaf jobs sometimes, even just big paint jobs. And I'm like, I get, I, get, I lose track of time. Yeah. I'm like, it'll be like two in the morning. And I'm just like, where am I? You know, I'm like, it's just weird. You just get consumed by this yeah. and you're just like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then like, well, you don't, you want to see that you're getting closer. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I've, I've talked about this recently on the podcast, but I've been doing puzzles at home, like uh-huh. thousand piece, five hundred piece puzzles, and it's the same concept. Where like you get a little bit going, like all right, I'm, I think I'm done, and then you you, you get a couple more clicks in, and you're like, yeah, oh, you're, fuck, you're like I seeing see it this. come to life. Yeah, yeah. As you see this puzzle of this artistic project coming together, yeah. you get motivated to not want to walk away, and sometimes you you have to get to a point where you will because. For me, if I try to pinstripe an entire bagger like all graphics in a day, yeah that last piece is going to be shit. <laughs> so making yourself do a couple pieces, stop. Yeah. For me, like pinstriping is one of those things that like I get worse the longer I do it uh-huh. in a day, basically. So, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Uh, it, I guess depending on the day for me, I can see that. But I, I think that's one thing that has been, that's probably my strongest yeah, like point that one because I would do that at Iron Horse all day, all long. day long, all day, all day. You end up getting like this little bump on your finger. <laughs> Yo, dude, little, totally. So I have an airbrush bump right here. Yeah, it's like a callus. Yeah, where the airbrush would sit on uh-huh. my finger, and then there's another one that I, I get it's it from not my brush. developed. It's just like a, it's like a it's like a rough circle. Yeah. <laughs> so after ten thousand hours, you get this natural placement where yeah. everything fits in your hands perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the brush is the same way. I've even gone through the gambit of, like, I took, like, Hanson's class when he came to town. It's, it's how you I say was it, there. Right? I was you, there. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, like, hoping that just taking somebody's class, uh-huh. it was going to be a word they said that made me a better pinstriper. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it wrong. So I'm, like, watching everybody how they're holding a brush. I'm, like, maybe I've been doing holding it wrong, blah, blah, <laughs> blah, and doing this. And Yeah. It's just time, man. It is. Putting time it into is it. It is experience. It is Putting those hours in, knowing how to hold the brush, you might want to hold it different. Yeah, there, I, I hold the brush two different ways. Um, if I'm pulling longer lines and that are not as turny, yeah. I'm doing the whole like three finger down type thing. A lot of pressure. Yeah, just putting that pressure down. I use like baby powder on my yeah, fingers, yeah. which is funny because when I pour that out in front of a bunch of people that don't know, <laughs> yeah. they'll but they see it there. Yeah, they're like, "This dude's trying to do some rails." Before yeah, he gets yeah, on yeah, this. yeah. I know people have thought that. I know it. Yeah, and then like I'll, I'll see him look over at me and be like, you know, to make it like clear, like what I'm doing. But I put it on my fingers and it slides real good, you know. Yeah. And then when I'm doing like uh, flames or turning tight, yeah. I get it more up and down like a pencil. Mm-hmm. And then so you, you can you get that kind of roll it. Yeah. yeah, and then you just you can just roll that damn thing. You can roll on a dime. There's something like super satisfying about pulling the bulb of a flame. Oh yeah. And, and it all come in like to the licks together. Yeah. Yeah. Like seamlessly, you're like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when it's coming around yeah. and shit. Dude, I, agree. I love it. I agree. Learn like hollow flames. Like, that's got to be one of the hardest things to stripe. It's yes. just what because hollow flames are for you listening. It's like, it's basically just a pinstripe flame job. We would do that on base coat. Yeah. Ah, you talk about that was that's, an intimidating. That's one. how you get good. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, and if, if it didn't work, you're going hey, to. The send one it thing back to that, the painter. you know, for, for the uh, obviously, guys, this is a paint podcast. For 
all those things. You know when they like the be- like you go to classes or you get like the beginner video tutorials for pinstriping and airbrush. It's the same thing. When you see those people pulling lines, pulling lines, pulling S curves, pulling this curve, pulling oh, that I can curve. Do that. Those those repetitive motions make up everything. Totally. And same thing with the airbrush. When you get the dot, where you get the line and the dot, and when you yeah. get that control down, that makes up all of airbrushing. And it's mm-hmm. like when I first started, I was like, "This is gay. I want to fucking do a skull, motherfucker. Like, let's do some yeah, cool yeah, shit." Yeah. And all that's used in there. It's all. It's like you just have to know where to use it. If but if every time I went and picked up my airbrush and I did like it's a sheet of paper, lines, dots, lines, mm-hmm. dots, curve, curve. It was almost like a warm up to do some to do something. The same thing if you start pulling a couple of lines each time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get it going. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, we're good. Let me do a yep. couple. Of, okay, yeah, hell yeah, exactly. let's fucking run on it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. For sure. Exactly. I want to get better at uh, my the worst. I am, I'm the worst at like scroll brush outlining with like a. I'm, I'm saying like a, not like a scroll pinstripe brush. Not like doing scroll work, but like uh, what do you call them? Um, like a versus uh, virus or what? The f- virus. Virus. Uh-huh. Just like a little script liner. Like outlining with that small brush heads. You mean like outlining some sort of graphic? Graphic letters. Letters, letters mainly. Do you know, I'll tell you where, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the virus, it has, it, it has its place, but it's too pointed. Too pointed? Yeah, so you'll want like... Like, I, I use a Tidwell a lot of times. Okay. Tidwells, yeah. um, they hold more of a ball of paint at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So when you move, it's going to unload real evenly, and all your corners are going to match up. Come together. Square. So yeah. when you have that virus, and it's pointed, which some people can still do this. Yeah. It's just a little bit tougher. When it's so pointed, you know, it's like when your pinstriping brush is too pointed and you're trying to meet all the ends up, yeah. everything's just like... You know, well, it's kind of similar. I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can pull straight lines with a sword striper. Uh huh. But when it comes to outlining with anything else, like just yeah. being able to pull a straight line with a different type of brush, uh-huh. it's like it's just all over the place. And I'm like, have Fuck. you ever tried to outline with a scroll brush? I've tried using like the dragonfly brushes, and I'm well, better with those. It's a little bit more control, yeah. and honestly, like even a uh, a thin Kafka. Mm-hmm. That's what I have. They work pretty well because yeah. they hold a lot, and they don't. They're not gonna like jump, jump. Yeah, and that's what jump. I get the jumps. And yeah. then also you have to like the palleting of that brush because all that paint has to come from the top and like flow into come it. right out of there. Yeah, because yeah. if not, you get the. I mean, the line's real nice and consistent, mm-hmm. but then it's just like, oh, here comes that paint that was stuck up here. Boom. Oh, that's what it is. You know, yeah. it's just all about it's a palleting thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Get that flow down right. And yeah, it'll, it'll kind of work that self. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I want to do, and that's what I was telling you. I want to do some of these like wood painting things. Yeah, and I feel like that will definitely that it, it'll be a paint by number situation where I'm just kind of like filling in this, but using the brush strokes. I'm hoping that it will kind of give me, you know, working with like different types of brushes and yeah. and things like that. Like I'm, yep. I'm, I don't know that to me. Like you said about being motivated, like right uh-huh. now that's motivating to me because yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. different thing. Yeah. And um, I, I used to sketch. I used to have books and I would like sketch little cool little things out. Mm-hmm. And I haven't done that in years because I don't have a place for it. Yeah. Like it's not yeah. really like people don't really want a flying eyeball on a helmet. Like it, they yeah, you never know. They might. I mean, I, I, they I won't say to, that. They whatever. used to want it all yeah. day long. Uh, but nowadays, it, it seems more like people just want graphics and yeah, and, and yeah. whatnot. But yeah, I want to try some other things, man. And, and you should. I think the I think the ultimate goal as a custom painter, or for me at least, right now, is to get to a point where I just paint for myself and sell what I painted. Be, that's of, ideal. You know, not that I'm not I'm not saying to everybody listening that I'm not taking in work. I'm just saying like the the goal would be to get to a point where I wake up every day. I come up with something in my head, I fucking paint it, and then I put it up for sale. You know what I mean? It's just like a bike builder. It. Like if you build a badass bike yeah, yeah, for yourself, exactly. yep. and then when you get done with it, you're like, hey, this one's for sale. Uh-huh. It's like the process, sometimes uh, sometimes the customer in- input can be very limiting to what you could possibly do with the project. Yeah, Because the energy that you have to put on the table trying to convince that person to let you do what you do yeah. can sometimes drain you of your enthusiasm to actually do the project. That's a, that's 100% accurate. Yeah. Yes. I, I completely understand that. 
Yeah. What's up? So after like Iron Horse, you know that that whole genre of motorcycles kind of went underway. Like, what did you do after that? Once you left there, like, how did you kind of make your way from that point? Well, Iron Horse going out of business is probably like the. I mean, I liked the job, yeah. um, but it was probably the best thing that could have ever like actually happened to me mm-hmm. because I haven't worked a job since then. Nice. I haven't worked for anybody since then. Yeah. Um, it forced me to. That's when Bomb Squad started. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like, like Bomb Squad started with this little product that I made, mm-hmm. and like, what was the first product? It's called a nose guard. It was to protect the front of your board if you fell at forty or fifty miles per hour, and your board goes into a curb or a wall uh, or anything. Yeah. Well, like those boards would, where they would shred. Yeah. They would just, and these boards were like. Hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollar boards. Just for the board yeah. itself. Yeah. And then some had carbon fiber in them, some had fiberglass, mm-hmm. bamboo. They were different than your average like little skate deck. Yeah. So like I made one and it like and I made it for my own board. Mm-hmm. And um and then some some people saw it. They're like, Hey, can you make me one? I'm like, Yeah, sure. And like I made a couple more and then like a lot of people started asking. I'm like, Well, these like they, they kinda take a lot of time to make. I'm like I don't know, man. And then so me and Wes were like, hey, let's like get some. I don't know if you remember Wooten Metal. I don't know if you ever dealt with them. Yeah, Wooten. They're, they're Davis Metal now. What's his name? Um. Well, then it was. No, it's not. It's not. It's not Charles Wooten. No, it? it's not him. Uh, shit, I don't know. Anyway. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, But we. uh. We had we knew somebody that worked in there, mm-hmm. and so we went in there and we like had a dozen of them cut, mm-hmm. and like they're sold immediately. Nice. And I'm like, oh shit, let's get some more. Get like 25 cut oh, sold, like that. And then we started selling hundreds of them, hundreds and then thousand. Mm-hmm. And then that's when we we like had all that money from that, and that's when we put it into building the board company, like mm-hmm. the boards, and like that's is it, dude. It started with like 200 bucks. It's kind of weird. Really lucky. Maybe right taste, right place, right time. Type yeah. Deal. That's. I think that's kind of what it was. But it worked out cool. Like that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes to be able to look at it at like a thing, you know, I, when did, would you say that the the downhill skateboarding kind of like started to like become a, an industry or a thing? Two thousand when it started to become a thing in two thousand eight. Okay, so you were at the right place, I, right time at yes, that point then, yes. because. I mean, technically, street skating kind of started to become a thing in the early 90s, late 80s, Yeah, in a mm-hmm. sense. So if you were going to design something for that, like, you would yeah. be fucking still watching Ninja Turtles. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's probably a little bit irrelevant to this topic, but, man, there's this book uh, from Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers, uh-huh. and it talks about how, like, certain moguls of our lifetime, how they were – as, as talented as they were, as, as smart as they were, they were also right place, right time. Yeah. Like Bill a, Gates and deal, the Beatles yeah. and that's right. lots of different types of uh, athletes over the time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's fascinating to watch. But, yeah, you know, and that's why sometimes you got to be really aware of now and think about what you could do with what, – what are you doing now that's the beginning? And make it work. Yeah. Make it happen right then. Yeah. Which is really hard to do. But it's also smart that you actually made the one part and then, you know, like – took that and turned it into another part and yeah. then you know kind of if you keep evolving that way then it, it creates well. and then the whole bomb squad name became a thing it of did. that industry yep. like a, a, yep. a major brand of it so. yeah 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 and i mean we were selling to like i believe it was 75 or 80 stores all over the world that mm. carried our boards and apparel and accessories and it was kind of weird man it yeah. just didn't seem real and there are people and you know like we were sending like thousands ten thousand dollar orders to australia you know nice. like it's so it's just weird <laughs> you know I mean, i'm actually pretty sad that it's not still around but i have started with my buddy doug i have started um a mountain biking apparel using bomb squad mm. so that's gonna you know i'm like obsessed with mountain biking now that's like my new thing you like everything that we don't have here in dallas i know isn't that weird where do you fucking mountain bike hey, i did i just went to sedona <laughs> okay that, like that a week works. and a half ago or two weeks ago went to sedona which is amazing. And they went to California. Nice. I, I got a. Uh, I got into bike. I was trying to lose weight and it didn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> just I, I got a bike and I wanted to ride it, but I was like, man, 
I don't know. I didn't know if I wanted a road bike or or an off, you know, dude, a mountain bike. You can get bike. a mountain bike, dude. You can lose some weight so fast. I bet I could. I also fucking probably fly into a tree. <laughs> I'd be Dan going down yeah. a mountain, uh, going shit. down a hill, running, landing a creek or some shit. Dude, uh, Scott, Kim Candy Scott? Yeah. He got a mountain bike. He did? Yeah. And um, we went to this place called Spider Mountain. In yeah, that's Austin. South, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, Burnett, Texas. Mm-hmm. We were like, 20 or so minutes from Austin. Me and um, me and Scott and Jim, um, Chopper Jim, the Ooh. Jim's Choppers. Or Chopper, Not stock Chopper photo. Uh, John Jackson lives down there. Yeah, That's exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He Him, rides mountain bike. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And um, we went, uh, a big group of us went. Dude, it's so funny hearing Scott scream and yell. He was doing so good. He loved it. He was, dude, it's a ski lift. Oh, okay. A ski lift takes you up 350 feet in Austin. A ski lift. You put your bike up there. It takes your bike Is it up. for bicycling? Yes. Okay. It's so specifically for yeah, bicycling. I thought I mean, they, like, they built a ski lift like, oh, no one snow. day it might snow here. No, nah, nope, nope. I will tell you something funny, though. The day that it opened, it snowed. <laughs> That's weird. In Austin. <laughs> but, dude, that was like, oh, that was so fun going there with Scott. I it, can't see Chemical Candy Scott without a cowboy hat on. Uh, hey, he was wearing blue jeans, dude. <laughs> Mountain biking in yeah. blue jeans. Yep, yep. Yeah, there yep. you go. Did he have a vest on? He didn't have no vest. <laughs> that's nope. fucking awesome. Yeah, that's funny, man. How how have you done a lot of work with him over the years? Like, uh, not a lot. I've done some pinstriping for striping him. Striping for yeah. him, yeah, things like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how many like really big name people in Dallas there's been. Yeah. You know, uh, with the paint world. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I feel like Texas has always had a. Probably more so in the hot rod culture, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? Like shops and builders, and from Houston to even like mini trucking and mm-hmm. and that kind of world too, as well. Um, did you ever get down with a lot of the mini truck things? So like people wanting you to paint that type of stuff, or no? I think it was a little bit before my time as well. Like the Craig Frazier, yeah, type yeah. stuff. No, I never, I never really did anything like that. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I would like to. I feel like the only reason we did that kind of stuff, or I wouldn't say the only reason, but Gary was good at that, uh-huh. right? That's kind of the scene and style that he kind of came up in. Yeah. And so doing the razor or barbed wire striping thing that – Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always the thing that people that didn't know how to pinstripe would do oh, because sure. it kind yes. of yeah. looked cool or whatever. Uh-huh. But So you, you take you, a – You could pull it off. <laughs> Dude, I used to fucking do that <laughs> everything. Oh, that shit. was a good one. And then, like, I actually started getting better at pinstriping. Even that looked better because I didn't yeah, like yeah. – Fucking turd going. Down well, you there. know there was a way we did that at Iron Horse that kept it to where you couldn't get away with it still. Mm. You know, and I still use those. Like when I ever so often when I have to do that, when somebody asks me to do that, yeah. I'll pinstripe the whole bike first, and then I'll go back and I'll add my little extras yeah. off the end and then in the bulb. Yep. With the dot. Yeah, they uh, they would get to the point where sometimes they just have straight X's. Just it's just like dude, it's just like just X's all over the thing. I was like, that doesn't look good, man. But uh, that's uh, yeah. that, the thing about the custom paint scene is like, yeah, you have like the the flake area it was like more of the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. And then as like the technology and the paint, it kind of opened the door for us to be able to do more types of things on stuff. And, yeah. you know, in the last 30 years, I would say it's like the paint world has just become a massive industry of, uh, of things. And it's so crazy because custom paint we still rely on another industry to exist so that we have the products to exist. Yeah. Because without the collision industry, we don't have products to do what we do with. Yeah, that's true. You know? Very true. Well, there will always be car wrecks. Yeah. (laughs) Electric vehicle or not. Yeah, exactly. There will be car wrecks, so we're good. Unless they come with a new metal that doesn't need. They just (laughs) anodize cars. Oh, yeah, that Cybertruck. Yeah, Cybertruck. Or they just fucking like... You know, it was like certain bikes, you, you could get the plastic, they would just injection mold the plastic with a color. Oh, yeah. Well, that's how, like, the smart cars were, all oh. the plastic oh, on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, could, you can replace all those panels oh, on, a, on it within, like, an hour, and it's like a whole new car. That's crazy. That's smart. <laughs> I'm going to go pitch. Do you need a beer or anything? I'm good, man. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so real quick. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, I was in a body shop for 15 years mm-hmm. in Dallas. And that was actually one of the cars I worked on was a smart car. Uh, they they had a couple different techs working on them for a while, but yeah, that was just a complete throwaway car. Yeah. You can you can literally put that car 
like completely strip that car with and put it back together within an hour and swap those panels out to like the painter to do some custom painting for Dang, it. Dang, man. Yeah. We'd have those come in all the time. Smart cars. Yeah, and then uh Yeah, that was actually funny too, because uh I originally was like pretty big in the mini custom mm-hmm. or the uh, mini truck yeah. scene for a while and like I used to go like trucking events and everything like austin had a uh, heat wave oh dude I, I went to that all in the 90s and everything yeah that was that was my thing like going there all the time that's that's actually sort of where i started getting into custom painting was like i, I remember seeing magazines when i was younger like seeing motorcycles go by yeah like i didn't really see too many of the custom cars or anything uh-huh. other than like hot rods yeah but like motorcycles almost everyone had custom painted motorcycles yeah. and but then going to like those shows, like, okay, well, there's not just hot rods. You can have all these trucks having this, and then some of them would have like their like stuff on a trailer, even their trailer done and yeah, everything yeah. completely bagged out and <clears throat> custom painted. And it's like that's how I got into that part, mm-hmm. and just going on just a weekend trip going down to like Heat Wave, seeing that, yeah, and then uh, dude, Heat Wave, I remember that. Is yeah, this still yeah. around? I don't know. I haven't heard about that in a year. Oh, no. The first time I went there was um, 04, and that was the one where they would, like, if you came into the parking lot, if you had a truck or, or like, like a Corvette or something, they would stop you, and you'd either have to, if you're on bags, they would make you slam it and scrape, or they would make you do burnouts yeah. right there. Yeah. And, like, family cars and they're like no you gotta wait we gotta see this and everything like i just want to get in i saw some of the craziest stuff i've ever seen at heat wave man yeah and the uh heat wave 97 maybe dude uh, oh my god it was chaos you walk around there because they'll party at night Mm -hmm. you know and i like i didn't go there to party i just went to people watch heck i wasn't even 21 yet well our in our hotel this is when like the mini bikes started coming out really big Uh there were tracks in the hallway <laughs> yeah. in our hotel but uh, then like the one next to us there was a huge party all night uh-huh. chicks with their tits out and everything yeah, and, like yeah, yeah. burnouts and everything like that but then um they had it was a like an f-250 that was stretched had six doors on it oh yeah they backed it up to the balcony you can literally step over the balcony into the back of the truck nice. and not even worry about anything God oh, damn it. and but it was so chaotic there like cops came and everything a yeah. vending machine was oh, ripped yeah. out of the ground that was bolted down and it was I believe nuts. it dude I walked up on in the show at night when they because they would cruise mm-hmm. around the grounds where the show was I walked up you're just walking through this crowd of people right um there's this guy and this girl just having sex yeah <laughs> so it's just like biker shit dude it was like it was like being at a concert but there's people on the ground having sex they did heat wave at the same place to do rock rally right the Travis County yes. Fairgrounds mm-hmm. yes exactly yeah. yeah and the Lone Star Roundup Oh, it's there too. Uh-huh. I never got to go to any of that. I, all the mini truck things and like the truck shows that we would go to out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a couple in in Temple, Texas, and then oh, uh, yeah. a few around here. But man, those things were wild, dude. Like it's the same people as bikers. It's just yeah, yeah. a different kind of vehicle to get there. You know what I'm saying? Hell, those bikers now were probably who was doing heat wave then. A lot of them are, <laughs> man. To be honest, I mean, with they you. did have bikes there too, so it yeah. wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. It was always sport bikes back in the day, I felt like, at the truck show. Most, most of them were sport it's bikes. It's like you had a homie that had a, a bagged, like, S10 or a Ranger, uh-huh. and then you had you had a fucking F4i or some shit. Yeah. A little Honda. Yeah. But they also, like, when I went, they also had the lowrider stuff on the inside. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that was the same, like, when you went. So. Yeah, they did. They did have that. Yeah. Like, indoors in that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah, that shit was fun. It was good times. Yeah. What when did you uh when did you start like because you how much of the gas monkey stuff did you do whenever that shit was going on? Um, like were you on there a few times or how that was probably work? on like maybe like maybe six or seven episodes. Uh huh. And you know it was just random. How what's it like being there trying to do your work while there's cameras and were they kind of directing you like hey do that again from this angle? Yeah. They did do that. What was that? What What was going through your head the night before the first one? Like, because uh, I, I was, gotta imagine it's gotta be weird to think like I'm about to get filmed to be on. I know TV. It was you know kind of I, mean? I was kind of a nervous wreck, honestly. Mm. But I just luckily I'd been there um, enough times to be comfortable 
Oh, because they would have all the cameras around already. You just weren't on it. Exactly. Right, yeah. So I had been there a bunch of times because I knew the people there. Mm -hmm. So it it helped with um, feeling a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. Um, Everybody was always very, like, they would kind of respect when you were, when, you know, because they're they like, okay, we're going to do the, they call them OTFs. And they will be like, all right, so we're going to ask you this. And, like, you're just doing this, talking on this camera in front of all the people that are in there working, too. Yeah. And, like, normally those people were pretty, like, they, were, they wouldn't look at you. They would keep working, except for Casey. <laughs> he would get behind the camera guy uh-huh. and just, like, make faces at me. Yeah. Or he'd be like, oh, I remember my first time. You know, he would just he would bust my ball so hard. And I, that's what I, that's what I love about him, though. Honestly, that make that that's who he is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, all those guys are so great. Really, mm-hmm. they are. I don't have a problem with any of them. And they did a lot for me, honestly. Yeah. That that whole th- that show, like you know, I've never been. I wasn't much of a TV guy for quite a while. I never watched TV yeah. almost at all. And then you would hear about the show, but like like I said, I've always been so heavy into motorcycles that yeah. It just mm-hmm. didn't really appeal to me to go watch. Sure. And I know that they do fuck with bikes here and there. Uh-huh. Um, like, I did watch the one where, like, Aaron built the bike and then Paul Sr. or Jr. and Sr. Oh, the build-off thing? Yeah, it was kind of a weird kind of thing. But right, Where Jesse James almost fought Richard? Yeah, something like that. that was that. funny. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was just kind of a um, – that thing. And then, like, you know – the gas monkey, like right when the gas monkey thing was growing, like blowing up, if you will, in Dallas, because I knew a lot of people that worked there. Mm-hmm. That's when I started traveling, uh-huh. like going different places to work and starting to like plant roots in different parts of the country. Yeah. And so I wasn't here a lot. You know what I mean? So like in 2012, 13, 14, when that show was kind of coming of age, if you will. Yeah. Because I worked with a lot of, I never worked with Aaron, like I said, I never yeah. worked with Casey. But a lot of other guys, like, I'm like, man, we used to go to lunch together and his mm-hmm. fucking, you know. Well, you know, like, Jeremy, he worked over, remember, at the place, what was that place called? DFW. DFW Power Sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I ended up he, taking over that entire property. You did? With, with, it, it went, when my shop was called Live Fast Customs. I remember, yeah. I remember. And, uh, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Jeremy worked there, and then the guy I was telling you about that had this shop, uh-huh. Jesse, worked there. That's how I knew them. That's how I knew him when he had this shot. Gotcha. Gotcha. But yeah, that uh, that was a wild time too because they were building some pretty rad shit over there. Jeremy and Jesse, they uh-huh. remember they wide bodied a, a challenger. I saw it. I remember right when it came out. I remember. I was like there the doing some ones. work, um, on something when they were doing that, and they were like, "Oh, this is gonna be crazy." Because you used to fuck cool. with the dude Chris from Drop Zone too, right? Yeah, you know he actually worked at Gas Monkey yeah, for a while. Yeah, it was a short stint, wasn't it? So I think they tried a um, wheels and well, uh, an, a situation there where a customer could bring a car and have it worked on. Yeah, um, that was basically Chris, mm-hmm. and um, it, that didn't work out too well. But I don't know why or whatever. But yeah, well, get the 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 property there at Gas Monkey Garage is not very big. It's pretty big, dude. Well, to run like a production team with doing the kind of vehicles for the show and then have an actual. Well, so what you don't see, um, which is actually really cool. So I think Richard's pretty much bought the whole freaking block. Mm-hmm. So the Gas Monkey is, is this building. Mm-hmm. And um, it goes, it kind of does an L, you know? Yeah. And then they have this other little shop that's the merch shop. Yeah, in the front. Yeah. yeah and then. So, and then there's a building next to Gas Monkey that mm-hmm. doesn't look like it's a part of Gas Monkey. It looks like a different business. Yeah. But in the middle of their shop is a door mm-hmm. that goes into that building. That building is massive. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, I say massive, but it's as big as the garage itself. Yeah, yeah. So there's like basically having two Double the spaces, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And that place is like where he keeps all his car collection and they have the meetings and mm. I think they were doing the energy drink. That's where they do that. What'd what they do with the energy drink? They brewing it there? Dude, I don't know what the hell that was going on with that. I don't know anything about it really. I just That was that. funny when Jesse posted uh, the energy drink. It was on like the Clarence rack. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met Richard either. You know what I mean? Uh, and I don't, you know what I mean? Like I've, Everybody in town, you know how it is. When someone in the town you grow up in or you kind of are from, yeah. when someone kind of makes it, however you want to consider that, 
you got half the people they're gonna say like, yeah, man, that dude deserves it. And other people are like, oh, that dude's a fucking, he's a sham. He shouldn't be there. I know ten dudes better than that. And that's how it's always been with everybody that ever kind of gets out of a town in, in the area. Maybe in California it's different because you have such a massive population in like L.A. Yeah. and those areas where people are building lots of hot rod culture comes from that area. Mm-hmm. Well, in Dallas Fort Worth, it's kind of it's, there's borders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 for sure. And then you're in a different temple. Then you're in Houston. Then you're in Waco. You know, shit like that. So. I don't know. I will say he has done a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he has. I mean, is, is hyper or whatever, he you know, he he's he's an entertainer, I I guess. Yeah, for sure. So he's got it, you know, he does that and that's okay. Like but he did, you know, I, I'm not I won't deny the things he's he's done for me. The people that probably criticize him have never tried to do their own YouTube. And when you start trying yeah. to do your own YouTube and you realize how bland you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't watch myself. Like, then yeah. you realize that you kind of have to be a little bit more out there and mm. hands and fucking, like, personality. Like, yeah. you have yeah. to be yourself you to. a little bit more. Yeah, you do. You know, you can't he, go on He those. knows how to do that. Yeah. I'll tell you. And he did a lot for me. I'm grateful for it. Aaron did a lot, a lot for me. Casey yeah. did a lot. They Those guys went above and beyond yeah. for me. And like I I could never like pay back what they've done. For sure. Yeah. And like and they're just and they're good people. They're good people. All these people like always have bad things to say about somebody. Are those cars weren't built in that time? No, they were. Yeah. Dude, those cars were built in that time. Like you wouldn't believe it. These people had no that, that and that's and that always bothered me about that is people would criticize them about saying, Oh, that's just TV. Like these dudes are like killing themselves. Yeah. Working a hundred hours a week. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, not sustainable. Yeah. And they would do it and they would just do it and like do it and do it and do it. And like that shit would get done. And I tell you, two of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do in my life was those Hot Wheels cars. Mm. Like, dude, you're I don't know if you remember the Corvette. There was a Corvette that became a Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. Well, I like did the lettering on it. And it was on the Hot Wheels. Yeah. And then they did another one on a Connell line. They called it the Hypo Holler. Mm-hmm. And it was cool. It was like orange metal flake with the motor in the oh, back. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I did like, that's probably the most gold leaf I've ever done on a single job. <laughs> I think it was $600 worth of gold. God damn. Dude, it was letters this big. Two two words. to Hypo Holler. Well, it said Hypo Holler. And it was just, yeah. dude, it was like so much gold. It looked really cool. Yeah, I would say that, like, uh, the opportunities that come from, like, you know, obviously the collective of KC, Aaron, and um, uh, Richard coming together to make that show originally, right? Yeah. That yes. made it go, and then it, it's successful. And, you know, Richard's a lot to do with that because of his personality, but Aaron's yeah. work, mm-hmm. KC's paint work, and his It all was a perfect storm. You honestly. make it, and then, I mean, so many people, I associate just like I look at the West Coast Choppers. Mm-hmm. When guys, everybody that worked at West Coast Choppers back in the day when it was in Long Beach is yeah. somebody in the industry still, uh-huh. right? Yep. Same thing with the people that have gone through the uh, motions with Gas Monkey Garage here. They're, you know, you got KC, you got uh, Aaron, you got fucking Dustin out in Lubbock now. I think he still builds trucks or something like that. Yeah. People kind of take that opportunity of exposure that that show yeah, gives sure. them. And they turn it into something for, for themselves. You'd be dumb not to. Yeah. yeah you got to do it. Sure. That's, that's part of the hustle. Or take the opportunities and, and like, turn it into something. I mean, yeah. this the, the, the world of custom anything, whether it's bikes or cars, is not – it's a labor of love yeah. to be in this thing. I mean, yep. you know, I don't have a fucking 401K waiting on me whenever I turn 60 years old. So yep. I got to try to fucking make it somehow. Yeah, exactly. And opportunities like that is what makes it kind of possible to mm-hmm. kind of – Expand on your dreams is what you would want to do as a as a painter, builder, fabricator, mm-hmm. all that shit. No, so that's right. I, I dig it. I agree. That's it's it's probably the same thing that like we were joking earlier about the thing with Iron Horse when it went out of business, and then all of a sudden we had forty fucking yeah, custom paint yeah, shops yeah. in Dallas. Yeah. Right? Are you hiring custom painters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I was one of them. I mean, that was actually a tricky time, but it was also a hot time. Yeah, that people like dude. Pay, people were paying stupid money for paint jobs back then. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I mean, you, and the cost of living was less. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I I don't know that if it would have been now that I could have I could have just yeah. not had a job. 
Yeah, true. It's just weird how how much we relied on word of mouth mm -hmm. and just getting a phone call here and there mm -hmm. versus now how we rely on social media. Because back in the day, like in 2004 and five, like how did you get your work? That like how, how did it, how did it, it? Word of mouth, dude. That is like it. You said all of a sudden it. your phone rang one day and you're like, hey, this is so-and-so. What's up? And he's like, hey, man, I'm looking, is this the custom paint shop? I'm like, yeah, what you want? <laughs> Next thing you know, it's like, oh, okay, this guy's serious. Yeah, yeah. You know, let me talk to him a little Bring bit Bring it different. over, yeah. Yep. Or they just show up or, you know, like it was all like a word of mouth thing. You know what I mean? And now, you know, you just fucking, you got a folder on Instagram of all the different paint jobs from all the different painters you yeah. like. And you're just weighing the options. You know, it's just, it's different, man. It is, it's weird because it actually, like you say, it's like it kind of went from being a, a local thing yeah. to a worldwide yeah. thing. You want something pinstriped by this person? Okay, you just ship it, ship it to them and... There Did you, you ever get some, I've heard stories of like, I can't remember if it was somebody here out of Dallas, they got flown to like Italy and shit to pinstripe some cars and stuff for a guy or somewhere in Europe. I can't remember who it was. I who, think it was. Who in the heck could that have been? I, either, either Sissel told me about this or somebody in that circle told me about a dude here um, that was a striper that was like all of a sudden getting, he had just landed some super rich dude that was like, hey man, let me fly you out to to my so-and-so here to stripe some cars for me and shit like that. I can't think of who that would be. I don't know. Dude, of course, it was also when you couldn't fact check anything, so it could have been some bullshit. You could have been fucking with you. I mean, back in the day, like, you know, like, what's this guy's, what's his Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in two minutes, you know everything about him. Yeah. Now, yeah. Or then, it's a different story. You could say anything. What, the, the, you got a, the, is it a Carmen Ghia? Is that what they're yeah, called? Yeah, yeah. Why'd you choose that car? <laughs> I've always been a Volkswagen guy. For real? Always. I mean, I've had eight or nine Volkswagens. For real? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them, re like, uh, when I had the shop we were talking about earlier where the DFW Power Sports was in Cedar Hill. Yeah, yeah. The Elliot across the street. Yeah. yeah I yeah. used to go That's see that That's who I bought dude. that car from. Oh, for real? Uh-huh. Because he, he had us paint, like, a... He used to put on a show or something like that, and he had us paint like a uh, Volkswagen. Dub Splash. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. like a trophy for him once. I used to letter all those trophies every year. I think maybe you didn't that year, and he asked me to paint it because I just, like, taped it off and painted one maybe. or some shit. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Oh, the first year I didn't. Okay. So maybe that, maybe you did it that year. But, uh, no, that I, I used to think, like, I never gave a fuck about Volkswagens, and I was at his shop one day, and I was like, that's fucking dope. It was like He's a laid out, cool clean stuff. ass, old school bug. I was like, I could fuck with that, dude. He has a car in there. It's called a, a swim wagon. The it's fuck? an amphibious. It can go in the water. <laughs> it's a Volkswagen yeah. from 1943, mm -hmm. and supposedly there's pictures of this car. See, the, and I think this is where the value of this car comes in. There's pictures of this car, the same car, mm -hmm. on the beach in Normandy. Wow. With freaking Nazis fighting, shooting out of the back of it. Dude, how crazy is that? I bet you train has a boner right now. Dude, that's the craziest thing. And that's that car. They coded them. They had yeah. codes on them. And you could see the code. How's that working right now with our current climate? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So would it be considered a right-wing car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what... what the The, the amount... Like, when I, I started to learn... He was telling me, actually, about, like... Like the Volkswagen buses and stuff, um, like how, like the, or not, they're vans, the vans. right? Yeah. Bus. Is that what they uh, call them? Buses, yeah. yeah. Like the, the ones with a lot of windows are worth like yeah, yeah. stupid money. 21 and 23 window. Yeah. Dude, it's like, I wish I can go back like 20 years ago and like buy all those up for like five grand because they're worth like a hundred now. Serious? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy numbers. It's like the ultimate van for like the van life. Like person that wants to have like the Instagram, but unreliable as hell. Yeah, get a sprinter, bro. It's like, hey, van life to Lake Arlington. Yeah, you know, or something. Yeah, they're not getting out of Dallas for worth. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, Elliot was smart though. He Subaru swapped a couple of his, I think, and like mm. him and his kid take it everywhere, which is kind of cool. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Th will those fit in like the actual bugs and stuff? Yeah. Uh huh. Damn, that's not. Y a bad you idea. you do have to modify some like stuff. the the flat Subaru motor. Yeah. Exactly. The yep. Nice. Was the Which, Boxster motor or yeah. whatever. And it's like, you know, 200 horsepower in one of those little motors is like a hot rod in a Volkswagen. So what do you have in your uh, Carmen Ghia? It is a 2276cc. Uh -huh. it's, it's a Volkswagen motor. Yeah. It's just 
spin board and stroked and turbo you got a massive fucking turbo in there. Yeah, thing. there's a turbo on there. Um it's E eighty five. Uh-huh. It's actually flex fuel. And um I'm about to put water meth on it. <laughs> Which is just no, I mean just water meth sounds like some fucking I know uh, some fancy shit they come out with in East Texas for doing <laughs> another type of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> got that got that breaking bad part three blue, coming out. Sounds blue, blue map have teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's radical for sure. But I am so tired of it. I'll tell you that. I'm tired How of much it. do you get to enjoy ride driving it versus I'm not done building it. It's been a while. Dude. I've seen the turbo dude. Some of the pictures of the turbo set up in there for years now. It's been how many years is it? It's that? been five years. Five fuck. <laughs> Car guys have patience that I don't think bike guys have. You know, the patience is there because there's no choice because the money is spent. Yeah. You know? We were talking earlier, I think, before we turned the mics on, about how, like, guys like KC and Shorty and things like that, they have these shops. Like, they build or they restore, in a sense, on an hourly charge. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. For those listening, like, that means that, you know, if you're a bike guy and you come to a shop and you're like, hey, I want you to build my bike, you're usually like, well, what are we looking at to do this build? Yeah, yeah. Real builds are billed hourly, not, like, mm-hmm. a set price. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't imagine. And you were saying, like, some most cars that are coming out of those shops are in the two, 300 price range. Yeah, from yeah, like a, like a full restoration. I mean, that's, like, six figures, you know, for sure. Is that new, like, custom chassis? Oh, okay. Everything is touched. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, you start with, like, the whole sandblasting of the whole car that's completely disassembled, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just, like, they go and you repair every single little piece. Try to keep as much original Dude, as possible. A pinhole. A pinhole that you can see with a freaking, you get a magnifying glass, you fill it. Yeah. With metal. It's it, it's a perfect those those dudes built Shorty and Casey built mm-hmm. perfect cars. Did Shorty ever get? Because Shorty's been on the podcast before. Did he ever get like this? He had a lot of talks with the TV show stuff coming out with uh, uh, on the. I hate to say the Mexican channel, but I know there's something better for that. Telemundo, Telemundo, or something like that. <laughs> I feel like that's racist to say the Mexican channel. <laughs> You know, the channel that's on the taco shops when you go in there. You know, I know there's been talk of it, but I don't that's know. Worse. I don't know details on it. Yeah, I need to hit. I, dude, it's so it's so crazy how he's so close. <coughs> I know, man. He's right around the corner. And I, I completely, you know, I'd never go over that area, though, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, uh, he's Shorty's funny. right down the street from where you live. Dude, he's yeah. funny as hell, man. Oh, yeah. Dude, we I, wanted, I haven't done a podcast with him since we've had the studio, and I want to get him and Joel in here because Joel's never been on it. Yeah. So... Me and Joel used to share a shop oh, together. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had. Well, I was telling you about the one I had in Duncanville. Yeah. Uh, I had a shop, a small shop, and then I moved into a big shop right next door. And then he turned and took over my small shop, mm-hmm. and then we kind of, you know, became friends that way. Gotcha. So, and he lives. Yeah, right both down great street. guys. Me and Shorty, we we got into where we just call each other names all day. Thank you. That's the way it's supposed to happen yeah. in shops. Yeah, like, yeah, if yeah. you're getting called by your first name, then you're not cool. Dude, it's so funny, the stuff he says. Oh, it's so funny. I mean, it, yeah, it's great. It's a great place to be. Being able to work around other, like, people, Shorty, Joel, that we were just talking about, like, someone, they're all very creative and very, they have work ethic. Oh, that, yeah. That makes you, I feel like if you were around them, like, you want to fucking pump stuff out yourself. Like, you want to keep up with their level. They you know just I mean? keep going, man. They keep going. I'm so all over the place. Like, I'll come from a way an hour this way working to an hour, an hour and a half over here to do a job and then back to Arlington to do mm-hmm. a job. It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. But, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Those dudes just grind all day. Just grind away. Are you, like, a born and bred out of Fort Worth? Yeah. Arlington. Yeah. Arlington, yeah. yeah. It's make, it make, dude, Arlington is one of those plate, like towns where I grew up in Duncanville, yeah. and I know if you guys listen that aren't from here, they don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But <laughs> so when I was growing up in Duncanville in the 90s, like the place to be was Arlington. Really? That's where the best mall was because they had the, the Parks Mall. The Parks Mall. Then you had like Six Flags and yeah. Hurricane Harbor, which used to be wet the and wild. The f- Baseball stadium, like it was just always the place to be, right? Now and it has all that still, and it's not the place. It's to like be. I don't fucking want to go to Arlington. <laughs> Dude, like, Arlington there's too much sucks. traffic. Dude, Fort Worth is cool though. I like Fort Worth. I like Fort Worth more than Dallas, and I've lived in Fort Worth a lot. But 
Yeah. Dallas, if you, like, if you got homies in Fort Worth, I think the, like, I'm, I've always lived in Dallas, so I know all the places in Dallas to kind of yes. have the vibe that I'm sure you have in Fort Worth. Yeah, exactly. And easier you know? for you to navigate, you know, a little bit better. When I think about going to Fort Worth, I'm like, there's there's the tourist spots. There's the stockyards. There's the yeah, yeah, 7th yeah. Street. Gotcha. There's yep. – I don't know the little nook and cranny exactly. spots to go hang out with with everybody. And know? I guess there's that in both places. Yeah, I guess. anywhere really, probably even Arlington, maybe not. Yeah, though. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's it's just been a weird one. But how's uh with the last couple of years? I mean, you've done SEMA a handful of times. Mm-hmm. How many times have you been to SEMA? Uh, the first time I went was in 2003. Damn. Uh, and then I've been probably. Did you go there on your own or was yeah, you? Yeah, no, okay. uh, Me and Wes went, and then, uh, and then maybe three or four times after. Mm-hmm. After that, uh, once or twice on my own, and a couple other times with House of Color. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, God, the scene is so fun, dude. It's wild. Yeah, it's crazy to see the shit that people build. Like, yeah, it's overwhelming. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's super overwhelming. You, you can't even appreciate what you're looking at because the thing next to it is more impressive, and it just keeps on getting that way. Yeah, it's that way. The progressively whole time. getting better every time. And you're like, okay, hold on, stop, stop, stop. I have to appreciate this car. Sometimes it's like if you could, if you could catch SEMA, if you can go in there like after it's been open for a couple of days yeah. and allow all the photos to come in, uh-huh. then you almost have like a checklist of like, I need to see this car, this car, this car, this bike. Yeah. yeah. You kind of know what you want to see because just walking around and randomly looking at everything, you can miss a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like right, guys like miles. us. Yeah, yeah. 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 You'll walk a shit ton. I feel like guys like us go in there and we look at the bikes and the cars and all the cool shit that's going on and, there's other people that are there just, you know, to completely take in all the new products from these yeah. brands because they're trying to sell it. Yes. They're actually taking the brochures and keeping them and putting them yeah. in a backpack. And, yep. Which yeah. there are some cool stuff, too, like on those, like in those booths, you know. Like yeah. something there, but think about it. You're like, oh, shit, that's kind of cool. Like, I didn't even thought about that. It's just some weird part for a car. Yeah. You know, it's cool to see that, too. It always be cool to go see all the uh, – like the tool companies, like the oh, Miller, yeah. the welders. Dude, I always loved that. I always would go to the Miller. Yeah. The in two thousand three, I was like, man, I gotta find. I gotta, I'm gonna buy a MIG welder. Yeah, you know, and like, because I had a buddy who had bought one the year before out there that mm-hmm. they were maybe getting rid of them. I think that what they do is they might sell them after the show, yes. like that way they don't have to take them. Back. And I think they ship them. Oh, okay. Well, shit, yeah. that makes you better. Yeah, because I mean, you can't take them on the damn. Hey, you're like, yeah. you're on the plane. It's my carry on. And back then, those suckers are heavy. Yeah, they're fucking like. Help me. They had a little like a. I guess it fit though. Oh, they had wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I had a sinker wave, a wave here. I, I wanted to get into TIG welding for a while, and unfortunately, I wrecked a car and had to sell it. Oh, to, damn uh, it. Which one did you have? The one uh, sinker wave one eighty. I think it was the one eighty. You remember what I had? Or was it? A it's 200? the same one I have, but I can't remember. What it damn, is. y'all are bad, man. <laughs> I had a sinker wave. It was a sinker wave. Like, I ended up, uh, man, it was uh, my friend Carlos. What year was it? I, fu- it, I didn't buy it new. I bought it used off somebody. Um, but I had it in 2018. Okay. I had a series of really. It might have been a 200 then. If, unless I don't it was think a, it was. I feel like it might have been a 180. Okay. Honestly. The 180 was the first one sinker wave. Okay. Yeah. Man, I fucking love I used to come in here every day, and I would just cut pie cuts out of uh because i wanted to learn how to make my own exhaust systems yeah yeah yeah. um i would just cut pie cuts out of stainless and i would just weld them you know just trying to do the ten thousand hours thing getting with Mm -hmm. it and um it's one of those things that like one day i would be welding fucking badass Mm -hmm. and the next day i'd be fucking tapping it and fucking gluing it to the goddamn or welding it to the goddamn metal and i was like what the fuck am i doing yeah and I never quite got set up to actually have like a uh, a back purge system to oh. be able to back purge the welds to kind of see how that works on the inside. Yeah, it's and, cool. Uh, like you, like you. Yeah, it just looks the same. But that's side. what my friend was saying. Is like, if you want to learn how to weld, if you learn how to weld pie cuts, yeah, you'll get good really quick. Uh-huh. Because I mean, one exhaust system or one pie, one like stretch of metal can have. You know, five or six feet or mm-hmm. ten feet of welds on it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, so. dude, my pipe on my gear. Yeah, man, it could go around this building. Yeah, yeah that's like that pipe's only that long. 
but yeah, that stuff was, I, I, I just thought it was cool as fuck. And then at the same time, I don't, our industry in the motorcycle side of things, it, it's kind of, it went from back in the day where, where, I mean, there's still people building frames and building bikes and mm -hmm. making tanks. That stuff's never going to go away. There's always going to be a place for that, right? Yeah. But the bikes that I ride, they don't really require a lot of fabrication. Yeah. And so I felt like I was, you know, I wanted to learn how to make my own exhaust systems and things like that. But I, the, other than that, like, I, that's the only thing I would really have used it for. Yeah. And um, then, you know, I, I didn't think I was ever going to be as good as people that have already been doing it that I could just pay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so sure. I don't know. No, I'll tell you, man. Uh, Graffio. Graffio. Yeah, he God, did, my, he did the exhaust dude. system on that one. Man, that dude is an animal. He's a fucking like he he's a a, a pipe welder f normally, right? Well, he like, doesn't anymore. Yeah, his full time deal is making motorcycle pipes. Yeah, which I think is awesome. Yeah, because that dude is truly gifted. That's the that's the Loki of of stainless he, exhaust. You can see his wells because you can you know he can see where he walks the he does. the cup and shit like he, that. He doesn't add, he doesn't use filler. Yeah, that's kind of a problem though. What what do you mean? Because when you don't use filler and you put them on exhaust systems, they, they break. Do his exhaust pipes break? Uh, on the podcast, no. Yes. Huh. <laughs> or he did uh, on you mine. Know, it you did know, on mine. It's like, it's one of those. Yeah, you, and Jesse got in really fucked that. You have to, you have to use filler. Uh, so it, a fuse weld is what he would do mainly, and they yes. look beautiful. Uh -huh. right? right? But the filler is what keeps those things from actually splitting and breaking. Huh, interesting. And... Um, not every weld will break, but if you get a weld in an area where you do have a little bit of a stress, mm -hmm. it, it can snap it. And I had, I did have it happen a couple of times. Interesting. I mean, when you fuse oh. weld, you're literally taking that metal and just melting it together. Oh yeah, it dude, usually yeah. gets thinner. Um, like you said, the heat can really mess with it. Mm -hmm. So when you add the material, you're adding a little bit more strength to it yeah. too. Yeah, so. oh, it sure. just doesn't look as pretty as a fuse weld. Uh -huh. But sometimes you can actually. Uh, I, I don't know that I'm not a welder, so don't crucify me. But I heard that you can do a normal weld with filler, and then come back and then reclean it with a, a fuse like weld with the filler already like in walking. it. Yeah. That'll walk it and kind of clean it and flatten I it see. out more. It's just yeah. double the welding. Yeah. For so, sure. um, and like I said, Graf feels a good dude. He great straight pipes, but just I can't. You know, it. You have to put filler. You in. know, it's one of those things where it's like anything can happen to anything. Yeah. I've messed up pinstriping before. My pinstripes have come off stuff before. Yeah. I yeah. guess, you know. You want to know what I just did today? What? Or this last week? I I just posted some helmets today I painted, right? Mm -hmm. This dude has been waiting since March. That's mm -hmm. when he deposited me for these helmets. You painted the wrong color or something? Nope. No, no. Everybody approves. I, I sketch everything. They approve. Uh -huh. They know what I'm getting. Somehow I mixed up his size of his helmet. Oh no! And so you Simpson, the wrong helmet. No. Simpson has like three helmet, like three shells, and they they have it's like small and extra small are the same shell. Yeah. Medium and large are the same shell. Uh -huh. Extra large and XXL are the same shell. What He's an extra large. Like? I painted a large, and I have no idea where I fucked up, and I didn't even pay attention to it until I was putting the helmet in the box to go ship it today. And I'm like, at least you caught it. No, I caught it. I mean, and I told him, and I'm like, look, here's the deal. He 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 did say he's like, he's never owned a full face, but he thinks he's an extra large. So there is a hope in hell right now yeah, that might. he is an actual large. Yeah. Otherwise, he's gonna have a twenty seven hundred dollar helmet sitting on his fucking oh. mantle, and I'm painting another one for you know not free, but I mean it's free yeah, for him. Yeah. But it, it oh. basically is a twenty seven dollar fuck up on my end. Oh. With a portrait and all that shit on oh, it. And I'm man. just like... Well, you know what? We're all human. First time it's ever happened. So then it made me look at my... Uh, you know, I, I realized this today, and I'm like... I'm looking at my structure of, like, how I have everything. I was like, this can never happen again. Like, I got to get... Well, lesson learned. So right now, like, I have uh, I was telling you with all the helmets, like, um, I, I'm not taking anything else in, and I'm hoping that by Daytona in March... I can have everything that I got on back order or, you know, backed up, fulfilled, painted, shipped, and then I'm only going to take in four at a time at that point. Uh, there you go. That way I don't get behind again because what happens is, man, like one day you just – you'll wake up one day and, like, 
when you have all these people that you work with, brands, and then really loyal customers, mm -hmm. and anytime like, hey man, I want to put another helmet on the list, I'm like, I can't tell this guy no. Yeah. You know, he knows the program, so he's not at my ass. Yeah. But next thing you know, you have 30 helmets on back order, and you're like, fuck, man. That's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, yeah. 100%. And the whole point of doing helmets and doing things this way is to have this, this you know. Well, sim simplify it. Yeah, it's like, it's like if you're making a piece of art for yourself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not like, I got to be done with this by Friday. Uh -huh. For what? Why do you have to be done by Friday? Like, uh -huh. I want that same mentality going into painting a helmet that I would for something that's for myself or whatever, you know, like I yeah. just want to put everything I got into this design and mm -hmm. then when it's done, it's done. I'll sell it. I'll, I'll ship it. Yeah. Not like, Oh fuck man, I got to get this one done because I promised this dude two weeks ago, this one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you get backed up and shit like that. So yeah. And people complain or the paint world's very hard to, uh, explain to the, to the customer because they think they call it paint gel. You ever heard that term? Yes. I just yes. learned that a couple of years ago. Yes. My buddy told me about that. The paint, it's not that every painter is a degenerate fuck that doesn't know how to deal with their finances or they got a pill problem or a fucking alcoholic yeah. problem. <laughs> You're literally, it's the one job where you have to be a meteorologist. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you have to be all these other types of careers to make this thing work. Yep, yep. And literally, you can act, as simple as this for, for everybody listening everything could have went as perfect as it can go with dealing with chemicals right mm -hmm. and you clear coat this thing and you're like, fuck yeah it's badass turn off the lights go home you come back in the morning and somewhere somehow a fly yeah. made it into the paint booth yep. and landed and got <laughs> stuck on the top of this yep. white helmet yeah you're fucked yeah, yeah that promise it was going to be ready to go in two days now all right, now I got to sand this down in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's put a little bit of speck of white, <laughs> clear it all again. Exactly. Yep. It's a tough one, man. It's uh, I, I get it. I'm sure that some of us use that as the uh, as like the excuse when it's really just laziness. Yeah. But in all fairness, like sometimes you fuck up and you paint the wrong helmet. Now I got to go spend <laughs> a, another week working on a helmet. It puts everybody else behind. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. it happens. It does. I owe this guy. You yep. know, it's a sucky well, situation. Other people screw up all the time. We're allowed yeah, to. That's a weird one, man. Yeah. What do, what do you, so what do you think about like trying to get into next? I mean, you were talking about how like, you know, you do a lot of pinstriping the tables. That's the other thing you were saying. You do some badass things with that. These custom, like, are they more like coffee tables? Like for yeah. your, your uh -huh. living room kind of thing? Yeah. Or in tables or man You just like find tables. some. Some tables. No, and then I make them. Oh, you make them. Yeah. 100%. So I get um, I get MDF, and I have my friend who has a CNC router, cut me some shapes that I kind of give him. Yeah. And so um, I'll take that, and then so I found this. This will this will probably help you actually in some cases. I found this stuff. It's called Simtech. It's a, I've heard of it. It's a resin you spray, and it smells kind of like Bondo or fiberglass resin, but you spray it through a polyester gun. Okay. Two point four, two point five tip. I mean, take your damn super thick, yeah. yeah. And um, it's like gel coat. <laughs> yeah, it actually is, and uh, and it mixes really weird. It's like it mixes one percent. It's kind of strange. It's actually, dude, I'll tell you a story real quick in a second. So it mixes one percent to one hundred, which is just. I wish they could give me a different. That is like a polyester or like a it's you know strange. Yeah. It's like a drop. It's like it's like you, you fill, fill up a little drop thing and. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly well, right. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, some fiberglass, it says add, like, 200 drops to this amount. Yeah, like, exactly. Wow. But this would be, Count like, to 200. 10 Can't drops. Do that. Like, a whole, like, a whole paint cup. Yeah, like, all, is, all the way up as, as much as you, can, as, as you can read. Well, actually, not even that, because there's no measurement on there for that. So, it's like a guesstimate deal. Yeah. And, like, I'm like, all right, what's, like, what's 1%? And so I'll go, like, I'll find a measurement where it can give me some sort of, you know, so I've, I've figured this out now. And it's like a few drops of that shit. It's so yeah. weird. It's weird. I've never seen it. I've had to deal with it. But anyways, it, you stir it all up, you stir it all up, and you have a, you have a time, kind of like clear coat, but it's a little, actually a little bit faster. But you spray it on, dude. You spray it on that wood, and it, like, it soaks into the wood. And it and it makes it to where you can come back with three twenty mm -hmm. and DA it and base coat it. 
Okay. It makes it to where you can make take it's a paintable MDF. surface, yeah. Yeah, and an automotive, you know, and it, it makes in it, it that stuff penetrates into that wood so far that it makes that wood like nothing's happening to that wood. Mm. It just like encapsulates it. It it makes it to where there's no water ever going to get in that. Yeah, you can put yeah. it outside. It well, was, that's uh, a lot of guys that do uh, like base boxes. For cars, sub boxes. Yeah, yeah. Sub boxes. yeah similar it's similar. Base yeah, boxes. They, yeah. I mean, <laughs> boom cannons. Boom cannons. Uh, uh, they, Got the boom in yeah, the trunk. They, they, you, you can use like fiberglass resin uh-huh. and soak the wood. Yeah. You know, make it waterproof and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, saturates it. Yeah. So it, you think it'll work on actual like plywood as well? Like yeah, situation? Yeah, it's a totally. Portable. It's it's thin enough to really get in those pores. Mm. But it's what it's made for is coating guitars. That's right, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Because a uh, guitar, I've had... Wasn't there a guy out in Fort Worth that used to make guitars? Yeah. Uh, the, I, I uh, did one Juan. for... Juan. I found out about this from Juan. Okay. And, and he, he was... He, he would paint guitars. Uh, there was a, a tattoo artist out there that was also building guitars somewhere in Fort Worth. And I remember I did one for him a long ass time ago. And they were talking about that. Because otherwise... Yeah, it's good stuff. You... If you're like painting skate decks or whatnot, mm-hmm. you just can't wet sand at all. You have to do everything dry. Dude, it gets dry. in the holes and the holes swell. Yep. Yeah, I try to explain that to people. But, dude, I mixed one time. I mixed that stuff too heavy with the hardener. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> I was at Shorty's. And uh, I'm spraying I'm spraying these tables. And I got them all lined up because when you do it, you want to do them a as bunch of As much as you time. can. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I did it and I set it aside. You know, I was getting all my stuff ready. <laughs> And the dude, I look over and the the you know I got the PPS cup, yeah, and I, I got the lit, the thing on it. I look over and it's like, <laughs> dude, it's on fire. It's like the <laughs> thickest, densest smoke. Yeah, it's like damn near a fire in yeah. the middle of it. But it's just like, I mean, dude, it's like a smoke bomb went off, and I was like, oh, and like I went and grabbed it. And I was like, ah, oh, it's hot. <laughs> It was hot, and like I kicked it outside. I was like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> he was like, "What the hell? What are you doing in there?" Yeah, I was like, "I put I put one extra drop of hardener in it." But it's it's great. Like, like you know, uh, I used to do like uh, work in a shop where we made uh, molds for like car bodies. Uh huh. Like we would make it like a, a drag car. You remember Bob Norwood and like Norwood Automotive or yeah, something? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So he used to do. Uh, He's always been heavy in the race car mm-hmm. and just the drag racing world. And you, you ever remember Kenny Tran? Oh He's yeah, the yeah, race? Uh, import guy. So he started Bob jo- Norwood. Joe Tech. Joe Tech. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Bob yeah. Norwood used to work with him to build stuff for him for his uh, drag cars, like cool. the Civics and shit. Well, the shop I worked at was friends with Bob Norwood, and when the Scion TC first came out, uh-huh. th- that's the car one, right? The two door yeah. one. When it first came out. Toyota gave this shop that car that was on the billboards and said, make a mold of this car, and then you need to turn it into a chop top stretched front end for a funny car. And so my first job uh, at this company was turning this, like he showed me how to make everything to make a mold of the car. So I'm like using the clay and all the door jams and and using uh, the MDF to like make edges. So when the Uh fiberglass hits it, It'll be like an edge that we can clamp to and shit like yeah. that. And basically what we did was my, the first like three weeks I was – or uh, a week or two. I don't remember how long. It's fucking 20 years ago now. Yeah. Um, that's all I did was make the same. Then we did a whole car mold, pulled it off, and just the amount of fiberglass. Like we're talking like 55-gallon drums yeah, of yeah. fiberglass. Mm-hmm. And like you have that bottle where you squeeze it and it fills up the little bottle. Yeah. And then you pour it in, you mix it up, and you're just wetting it, and you got rollers. And, yeah. And you're trying to make this. It stuff stinks, too. Yeah, and it's, it gets so fucking hot, dude. It's yeah. like. Oh, yeah. Just being around it, the the, the, heat, the heat from, from that it. fiberglass yeah. starting to kind of set, dude, it's insane. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that's probably a similar deal <laughs> with that stuff. <laughs> just, man, you could. So, uh, my buddy in NorCal, he actually makes boats. Uh-huh. And I was when I was in NorCal in March, uh, he was actually laying up a boat. And that same problem happened. Like they were, uh, they were trying to pull a plug from a mold they already made. Yeah. But one of the guys mixed one of the resins too hot, and what happens is when you do it too hot, it can warp the mold yeah. and ruin oh, the mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, I mean, you, see that. you can fix the mold, but you end up having to do a reverse body work where mm-hmm. when that warps, you have to come back in there in the mold, in the gel coat, and, like, body work it body work and that, re-gel yeah. coat that and buff it so it that it's so smooth yeah. so that when you relay the new shit in there, you can pull a perfect mold out because you don't want to do body work. I think they do do body work on the mold itself, but uh-huh. you don't want to do wave body work. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. It's crazy. But there's, And I look at this, I'm like, why would you choose this to do for a living? <laughs> Fuck that. Being, that, that's, I mean, it's. I guess it's badass. I mean, I guess to each his own, right? You, uh-huh. Whether you're building a fucking car from bare metal, like fixing every little square inch, or a, a frame from a pile of metal that you built on a motorcycle, or... Yeah drawing a boat up and then making one out of fucking fiberglass. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess there's a sat- satisfaction in each one of those things, you know, a hundred percent, but yeah, I don't know. I, I chose the lesser of all those evils <laughs> with, uh, with the, uh, the motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. Pain will still kill you though. Yeah, yeah it will. Yeah, it will, man. What's one thing you've always wanted to like, you, how do I, how do I word it? Like, in the paint thing, has there been anything that you've wanted to kind of like work on and be better at in certain areas? Yes, absolutely. And it's something I, I'm, I'm, I'm so obsessed with actually is um, water gilding. Gold water gilding. Do you like gilding. the glass stuff? I, I love it. And oh, wow. I have an obsession with it. And I've done it a little bit. Uh-huh. I, know, I know how to do it. Yeah. Um, but it intimidates the hell out of me. I I, I I don't understand it. I, I, I follow like it's so Dave cool. Smith. Art. Oh, man. His stuff Dude's so wild. Cool. Like, you're doing everything in reverse. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You are. Yep. So and you're doing they, your outline first. Yeah. Which is like, mind fuck, dude. <laughs> so you're like. But they paint, like, once they put the leaf down, they'll paint the backside of yes. it. And it that seal seals it. Basically. Seals it. Okay. Because uh, if not, it's just raw leaf. Mm. You know, which means you can just go like that. Yeah, yeah. so that's they'll, some of them, when they do it, they'll do that outline and they'll paint it and all that excess, they'll just rub that excess off. Yeah. But all the Basically, stuff that's covered yeah. up is good. Yeah, yeah that, I guess it seals that, it in. That guy puts on classes or something uh-huh. like that, but he's, I think, in Europe or some shit. I met him once at you did? Letterhead, Cincinnati. Wow. Me and uh, Alton Gillespie went there, which is a, that guy is amazing. God, that guy's such a good artist. But yeah, I got to meet him, and like I didn't take his class, but yeah. I got to see what everybody was doing, which is so cool. I feel like that's one of those kind of art forms that it's very expensive to get it done nowadays. Like if you wanted to do your yeah. your window at your barber shop in it, an area, that is, that'd be a yeah. fucking insane thing. But and it's an ordeal, man. I well, think it's spe- bad. especially depending on like because I thought about doing that since I got my sandblaster, I can do some stuff on there. I used yeah. to. I did a mirror where you did sandblasting on the back side uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. and did some pictures of it. It was pretty cool. Um, but then the, it can tie in with the glass yeah, building because sure. you can um, – I forgot what the – it's like some kind of uh, – like an animal the, – the Chip seal. Yeah, chip, chip seal. seal. And so yeah. when, you, when you do the chip art like uh-huh. that, that's, that was really cool because you can still destroy this panel but in an art way. Yeah, it looks and, so cool. Yeah. The way they are able to chip the glass. Dude, on the I was just gonna say that. So that one actually, I was confused because they sell these tools uh-huh. and they're it like a hundred something bucks a piece. Whoosh. But um, I can't remember who it was. Might have been him. Like, yeah, did a he, video. He shows it where and, he does that, and he does it. But he showed how to make your own, oh. and it was just like, just I it looks do that like right a now. fucking crab cracker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're crab cracking up some crab, and yeah. you can adjust it for like how much you break a off, bigger but, one or a smaller. But you got to make sure it's right because you'll destroy this whole panel dude and i've i watch videos of guys yeah. doing it in like next to last one and it breaks do that this whole first panel. yeah yeah that's how you imagine yeah. i mean those like those pieces of like they're like weeks and weeks of work it's so cool there's certain i mean you fall like that sunny boy dude yeah 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 I love he, he does some badass so he does yeah. a lot of the born free uh, yeah, exactly. Like artwork. I for think their, he does it every year. I think he is. He yeah. just did it. It finished one today, I think. Or there was a draw, a sketch, or a sketch for one. Yeah. I love it. Dude, I love it's it. So sick every time. And I, uh, every time it's good. I'm like, God. When does this guy run out of ideas? I started. Uh, you know, I was asking you about the uh, alpha enamel, mm-hmm. and I've I've been following the guy for years. But since I'm kind of into this wood thing that I was yeah. telling you about earlier, yeah. 
I was just doing a deep dive down their Instagram page, and I found all these fucking badass artists that do, like, wood paintings, and now all the dudes that are doing the shoe Those paintings. shoes, man. The yeah. shoes, dude. Fuck bikes. Let's paint shoes, man. That dude, uh, man, I don't know, There's man. so he, many people doing the shoes. I know. I follow this other company called Angel Dust. I don't know. I don't know it. They they make a paint for that's a real uh, it's a real popular shoe paint that's supposed to be flexible and not chip up when you walk in it and stuff like that. But well, I forgot I forgot her name. She's an airbrush artist. Oh, bombshell. And, yeah, bombshell. Yeah. And she does those. Have you seen? Yeah, yeah. her do she her does some cool stuff, stuff man. Yeah, her, I actually bought a pair of those shoes like five years ago. For real? From her? Yeah, <laughs> I still have them. Pretty cool. Well, that, oh, when you do it on the fabric though, like a, on a pair of Vans, like that's different. Like. It soaks it's into fabric, the fabric, yeah. but the ones that people are doing now, like on Air Force Ones or like the leather shoes, leather, where they're yeah. like, if you use it's fucking more of a dye, I would assume. If you use one shot, it doesn't dry. It doesn't, dude. I've I've done uh, I've done a pair of shoes before, mm-hmm. and like, do like a month later, they're like, these are still wet. I'm like, I think it's the what? same problem that one shot has when you do it over like the rubberized clear coats. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. Sometimes it won't dry on it that won't either. Allow it. Uh, maybe if you put hardener in it, maybe. I don't know. I, I just know. don't do that anymore. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't think the paint dries on that stuff. It's 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 pretty awesome that there's a there's an industry for that. Yeah. I mean the the shoe paint industry. I, I've noticed it for a while. I met shoe one paint. dude. I went. I met one guy at a at an airbrush art circus that was actually really well known. I didn't know at the time for shoe paint for shoe painting, but he was kind of there out of his. I'm I'm gonna say out of his element to describe it, but he's definitely could hold his own. You know, as as an artist, but we're all in the automotive and the more yeah. fine art thing. And mm-hmm. this guy's a shoe guy. And that's a relatively young industry in in the art form. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So was well, that the same one that he does the celebrity shoes too? I think so. Like he did like the whole cast of like Suicide Squad or something. Probably that's strange. Yeah. Speaking of other artists who are just freaking so naturally gifted, the first Airbrush Art Circus, which was. A gathering. Back in the day when they would do it down in Austin and yeah. just hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was at that one. And Darren, Darren Wenzel. Fuck, dude. I've been trying to get Darren to do this podcast forever. Dude. Darren is hands down one of my favorite painters. He goes by gasoline art. Yeah. Um, I mean. He, he is like. Good at everything. Yeah. And that, so for people listening, like. I think there, there's a handful of us out there that are airbrush can pinstripe, can do graphics, can do custom paint. And he is hands down the only one I know that is it's top 10,000 hours of each category. Like 20,000. And vinyl. You know, because another part that's very often not talked about is the ability to create vinyl art on a computer mm-hmm. for you to be able to use in your paint jobs. Yes. Uh-huh. And, you know, one thing, like you see my plotter over there, that's something I learned from uh, Sissel back yeah. in the day. Yep. And so... He's one of the dudes, man, that, that fucking does the bet. Dude, his signs that he makes. Dude, and l- listen, he, he, I think all this with him started in Australia with sign writing. Yeah, it was. He's a, he's a traditional sign painter. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of that stuff is not even vi- plotted. The sign painters, and a lot of people I've met uh, that have that sign painter background, uh-huh. they have a precision to their art. Oh, dude. That I think some guys like myself, like like this, I'm an airbrush guy and I'm an airbrush artist, but I didn't grow up the way most airbrush artists came up. Most airbrush artists came up in the t-shirt airbrush game. Yes, yes. And so they have a flow with their airbrush that I don't have uh-huh. because I came up in a more like technical, they just had a style. It's like a single stroke type. Yeah. They art. can just, yeah. And you would notice it because. If you think about it, like lowrider style airbrush art always had more of a t-shirt vibe yeah. to it. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yep. Guys like Corey St. Clair has definitely kind of turned it into more of a realism uh-huh. over the years. Um, but then you look at, you know, guys like Sissel. Sissel's not like your traditional t-shirt airbrush yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I said, he's hey, like man. He's like a fine artist. He's a fine artist. Yeah. You know? And so pinstripe artists, I think, are with Darren with his sign painting thing. When you're painting signs and you're like we were talking about with the lettering and you're coming to the point at the top of the T, mm-hmm. you need that needs to be a fucking point. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. And for people listening, back in the day, billboards and signs were painted. They didn't have large format printers back in the day. Mm-hmm. So the whole industry of sign painting was 
that was a legitimate career for many, many people in America. Yeah. And uh, and very interesting. Fucking uh, uh, Lance, Big Lance from Tulane Life, uh, uh, Thrashen's dad. He's a traditional sign painter. He that's what he did growing up. That's what his job was. It, he doesn't it's do so it anymore, cool. but yeah. it, he still kind of will break out a helmet every once in a while and write like Tulane Life on it or something like that. I love that. Dude, I love it. I wish I would. I wish I could have had oh, that I opportunity know. to I know. come into a place like that, get that brush uh, because ability. You down. need those hours to get For good sure. at that. I mean, like I can like knock out some cool like script or whatever. And if I'm really like, if I'm like, I gotta concentrate hard, but I can do some cool like, I can do some cool lettering, you know. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know, man. Darren, I like it. So, topography is it typography, uh, right? Knowing the structure of letters. And, yeah, that's oh, a man. whole world, dude. I, I, I bought some, uh, a couple, like a month ago, I bought some like a black letter kit. To, or a, is that what it's called, right? Black letter? To just like do, like learn structure. Learn structure of yeah, letters to be able to dude. do like some more of that. Um, oh, man, there's there's so it. many fucking badass. Like, dude, Tukey. Yeah, Tukey's badass. His race car yeah. stuff, his race car uh, fonts. Mm-hmm. And I think he did a lot of... Uh, he fits the the genre though, yeah. His shit really fits like his paint jobs and his lettering go together like like fucking he, biscuits he, and gravy. He dude. took like the '60s race car, yeah, and like put a little bit of a modern spin on it, and I love it. Mm-hmm. He is also one of my favorites, and I think that he learned from Glenn and Weisgerber, who I was actually about to mention. I think him, he did, you know? yeah, and which you can tell, and yeah. the art, the lettering is very similar, mm. and. Like, Glenn Weisgarber was always one of my favorites, too. And then well, seeing two Watching games. him do some of his work, it's not only the letter structure, but it's also, like, spacing and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah. you can do it like this, but then it's he's, like, comparing it to, like, he'll do, like, one above the other. And he's like, uh-huh. this looks so much better because you tightened up this gap right exactly, here and then spaced yeah. it out a little bit yeah. more right here. Yeah. And it's like. Which it's, is something it's that computers don't it. capture. Yeah, and like a lot of those, you have to go back and manually do exactly it. Right. Yeah, so like obviously, I, I use a plotter, so I have to do that a lot whenever I make like words for the back of a helmet. And you can or, normally see it. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's like like when you have something centered, like uh-huh. a top and a bottom word, like a uh, fast life. Uh-huh. Certain letters like on the S. end <laughs> are like say if you have a uh, fuck, it's a it's a bad like. Um, if you have an L at the last of the, the last letter, do you have this weird space? It's this weird. It, uh-huh. it looks like it's off because yeah. the L has is heavy on the left side, yep. and if it's the last letter, it'll make it look like it's not centered with the top one, right? Yep. So you have to kind of get creative and play with the spacing up and in. down, mm-hmm. bring certain ones closer together to kind of make it look right in your eyes. Yeah, but dude, like typography is a whole nother career. And it's, it's a whole nother so career. Interesting to me. Dude. I love it. every bit of sign painting. I love it. I, it just is, it just does it for me, especially the gilding. Yeah, you know any gold leaf or anything like that. Is so and like I love when they fade the colors in the letters. Yeah, like there's a like big bold letters in there, and they're like they like fade the color. And have you ever used abalone? I haven't, but I, I know that Center Roots uses that. Yeah, a lot. It's dude, so I've used it on sick. a couple jobs. It's so cool. Where do you man. even buy it? Um, I got it on, um, I think it was signpainter.com. <laughs> Super basic. <laughs> Pretty simple. I think that's what it was. It was something like that. It was like real. But they sell like the backup paint. You know, yeah. A lot of times they, they say you don't want to use one shot mm-hmm. over your backup. It's this other paint that dries faster and it dries harder. Mm-hmm. And that, get that there too. And Did you ever hear that story about like certain pearls that were really popular amongst PPG and all the brands? Really high-end pearls. That, so in the late 2000s, Harley had a lot of colors that had these really wild flopping pearls. Yeah. Uh, sun glows is what mm-hmm. they used to call them. That in Japan, where all these pearls were made, a tsunami that they had a while back wiped out this whole factory where all these pearls were made. Oh. And it's the only place in the world these pearls were made. And it was such a complicated process. They just said, fuck it, we're never going to make it again. Oh, my gosh. So guys like Jeremy at Lucky Strike, <clears throat> he has some of these bottles still yeah, left over. Yeah. So he's got some in his paint jobs. And you can find them every once in a while. You might see a body shop that will have these bottles of pearls. used to be like six, seven, eight hundred bucks for the for the fucking bottle, right? Damn. When I was at the dealership, they had that <clears throat> issue yeah. with uh, 
it was white, but um, Ford had it. the same one and everything. At my dealership, like our my manager was the one in charge of ordering it. Uh-huh. He went ahead and ordered like a whole bunch that was still in stock in, in America. And then right when it started going, they were selling it out to other dealerships, like yeah. triple the cost because oh my it was gosh. so you couldn't weird. get it. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Really badass pearls, man. Yeah. And I'm like hating myself. It's it's same thing with the Murano Pearl uh-huh. when yeah. they stopped making that and like my buddy Gerald at Valley Customs, he has a freezer or a refrigerator in his <clears throat> in his shop with like a shit ton of it, like enough to last two lifetimes. Because that shit, like a, a thimble of that, will do a whole fucking bike. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. so concentrated pearl. Uh huh. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. When you get into all that crazy shit, I mean, I think Ke- Scott at Chemical Candy has a lot of those pearls too. He yeah. does a lot, but yeah, man, the. The ways that you bring these other elements into the custom paint world is is the fascinating thing. You know what I mean? Yes. Find like bringing gilding in in the first place was fucking awesome. You know? Yeah. Leaf completely uh, has carried the industry in the last like seven eight years yeah, for sure. Totally. You know what I mean? I love it. I love it. I love when like also um, Hot Rod Jen. Do you yeah. know her? Dude, she's her, a badass pin star. Her use of leaf, like art deco. Yeah. Um, in her in her paint. Oh man, dude, yeah. that's some like some of the coolest stuff ever. She's got a really fucking clean. Oh, dude. I love a like as as a fan of pinstripe art. When I see someone that that just spaces it perfectly, the proportions are. It right. just has like a style that yes. fits and flows. And, oh, man. oh man, I'm all about that. Like and her stuff is like. Top notch for man for me in my opinion, it's just like she thinks outside the box. Yeah, completely. she's got her own vibe, I her own vibe. It. I love it. It does. You, now that you say Art Deco, I, I completely see that. Yeah, shit. you know what I'm saying, hundred totally. percent. And she'll like bevel it. Not all, not all spun, not all spun, but she'll like she'll bevel to make it look like you know, like it's like it's doing this number. Yeah, you know, it's so cool. What was uh. The other guy, like another striper that I think's done, Mr. Oz has a vibe that I think is his striping style. Sometimes, uh, what, what do they call it? Uh, asymmetry. Uh huh. Where it doesn't kind of like have yeah. that perfect symmetry. I just like his look sometimes. You oh, know what totally. I'm saying? It, yeah, it just, it's the, the flow. The flow of is it, yeah. really good. He puts on the Brushmasters yeah. uh, events uh-huh. and stuff like that. Um, yeah, nice guy. I've never met him yet. Real nice guy. Um, I've been, I've used, I'm, I'm using his brushes right now. Good. They're good. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Real good. I, I think I'm like every other pinstripe artist. And when we first get into it, we start with like a Excalibur because uh-huh. they're already kind of trimmed a little bit. Yeah. And you can kind of get away with like not knowing how to work on a brush. I use all the blue handle max, all the blue wraps. Yeah. And you know, I'll be honest. I think that's what a lot of these brushes base off of. Yeah. You know, um, I, a King 13 is slightly is different. Uh, like the Hanson, Todd Hanson, nice guy. Yeah. Um, Oz brush. I think they they kind of like, they start there. Yeah. And then they'll take that. And this is my opinion on from using these br- these blue wraps for yeah. so many years. They'll take that blue wrap and then like, if you can make it better, they do. You know, yeah. which they do, honestly. I mean, anytime you can get a brush that's, I mean, you get the green wrap brushes. Uh-huh. I mean, those suckers are that long. Yeah, they're fucking thick, bro. <laughs> you got to go in it and like, yeah, you gotta. It basically it's like it, getting a seventies bush. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just trimming it down. It gives man. you a blank yeah. to make your own brush. Make whatever you want. So yeah. here's a, here's the hair, and it's that long. But it's crazy because you go into any paint store, a lot of art stores that sell these brushes. Oh, touch up brush. And they're stuck full of those green handle brushes. I know, like, I know. You hand that to anybody that's trying to get into pinstripe, they're gonna throw this thing at the wall. Dude, that's what I that that was the only brush when I started pinstriping. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing. Yeah. There was no other Mac brush. Then they came out with blue wrap. The Excalibur was the first things that I bought, and I hated them. For for Dude. I I could see why because as as a striper. You can't pull a long line with Excalibur. Dude, and the belly on those things, dude, I don't get it. The only thing that I liked about Excaliburs was the case that they came in. Yeah. I would I you would get, buy an Excalibur. It, yeah. I would buy an Excalibur to put my Mac in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. That was good. But I mean, and like ever so often you would get an Excalibur because the hair was really good in yeah. an Excalibur. Like it was like Real conditioned. Did you ever get to the point where, you know, for guys listening, like pinstriping is kind of like, uh, like you have 
squirrel hair brushes. Uh-huh. You have synthetic hair, which is basically yeah. plastic, right? Yeah, that and sometimes they'll blend them. They blend them. Uh huh. So I didn't know that. The, <laughs> but the, the green wraps are actually this, blended. There's this whole world of uh, the same way some people will talk about wine, whiskey, yeah. coffee. There's a whole world of pinstriping and, yeah. and what's best. I remember when the the dragonfly brushes came out. For a while, it was dragonfly, and then it was the monster sticks. Uh-huh. Was the hot one everybody had to buy? Yeah, for a while. And uh, Tidwell's, I've always had. T- I'm a huge Tidwell fan. Totally. Um, I have his books. He's the one that got me into sketching back in like '08 when I started buying some yeah. of his shit. And he's a mountain biker. He is. Yeah. No, <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> <Ollie>. <laughs> he, he's always had a style that I've just really enjoyed. Yeah, and loved. Yeah, yeah. Um, and his brushes are good, and they're like they're not expensive. You get a whole like, set. Like you don't different feel bad styles, if yeah. if you ruin one, you just go get more. Yeah. yeah. I'm, t- I'm all about those brushes. Actually, I, I need to do a podcast with that guy. I don't know why I haven't ever thought about it. Yeah, totally. I, don't, man, I would totally love to hear that. It, it would be dope. There's a lot of artists that, that I think... He seems like uh, the kind of guy that does his art. I used to love when cats would do those fucking like radiators where they like fiberglass mm-hmm. resin or something like that and make like a old school radiator right from like some yeah. old school shit mm-hmm. and just turn like the middle into like this bondoed out looking fucking painting yeah, yeah i think yeah. steve van De- uh, i never say his right steve van demon van yeah. something yeah, like that yeah, yeah. he did a couple of those and i know that tidwell did some and dude they're so sick yeah tidwell's a good he's like the the middle ground for pinstriping fine art exactly you know he's a good palette um, of both yeah right yeah but when these guys kind of came into my, when I f- really started consuming their art and loving it, it seemed like I've kind of brought this up in other podcasts before, but do you remember the late 2000s, maybe mid to late 2000s when just hot rod culture art, pinup models, uh-huh. Day of the Dead, all this shit yeah. kind of turned into like, hold on, let me, let me preface this. Famous stars and straps, t-shirts, <laughs> yeah, and then skin, and uh, then tribal, and yeah. then fucking affliction. All of a sudden, the t-shirt, the printed t-shirt era, kind of begins, and then it gives a place for a lot of these tattoo esque uh, pinstripe artists to kind of have a place mm-hmm. outside of automotive places or skin to put art. Yeah. And it kind of boomed this. I mean, guys like OG Abel went from being graffiti and airbrush mural guys uh-huh. to these, you know, guys that are doing crazy digital art. And also, yeah. it was when the digital art thing started coming along. People taking <sighs> sketches, drawings, paintings, and turning mm-hmm. them into, like, you know, vectors and things like that. Dude, so. I'll tell you who did it. Man, I'll tell you, in my opinion, my favorite is Dennis McPhail. I don't know who that is. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, man. All his art. You know who he uh, is? No. All of his art, oh, you gotta check it out. It's the best. Oh, what's it, your it's, password? it's all one shot, uh, all one shot. Uh, dude. It's all one shot. It's amazing, dude. And he'll he'll make prints. You know, he gets these prints, and I have yeah. I have them. And hell, he even did a couple of boards for us. For real? And it's all like I have some originals that he did. Does he have an Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dennis what? McPhail. Dennis McPhail. A uh, famous McPhail. Maybe he owns a tattoo shop in Kansas. Mm. Uh, artist at large and he is like an old school like beatnik you know like he's have he, you ever met darren mckeg yeah well i i i'm i'm friends with him on instagram i've never, yeah, yeah. I've never met him we've chatted a little on instagram but he I've really heard. took his tattoo style i love it and turned it i mean with this like he does like this the black fucking i love it man it's cool he has his own style and it's really good dude it's so popular yeah and he's yeah, killing yeah. it he's he's a hustler dude like I, every yeah. time i see that guy he just he's got the whole kid. He's got the card, the sticker, the fucking like signed prints. He's yeah. just like, hey, you get it all. And I'm like, yeah. man, like I want to be like you, man. Yeah. Like I just want to I have not spent time with him. He, uh, we did a podcast together uh high on edibles <laughs> at SEMA actually. Oh cool. So uh he came SEMA 2019. We did a bunch of podcasts and uh you know, I was there for Sherman Williams. We set up a whole podcast studio in our bedroom. Uh, Garley was with us, actually. Uh, I was going to say Garley. And uh, Garley had just had an accident, so he was, yeah. like, uh, fixing. Like, he was done with his leg, so he was at SEMA with a fucking broken leg. 
with that with not even a scooter. He was on crutches like this motherfucker. Oh like, my so he couldn't God. get around anywhere. It's hard enough just to walk there. Dude, he needed a scooter. Um, Hell, we need scooters and we can yeah, walk on Yeah, for sure. Like a little fucking, what are those things where you just, they were real popular for a while where you just stand on? Segways. Segways, but like the cheaper no, ones you can no, get at the without fucking. Without the handle? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the hoverboards. Hoverboards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the first podcast we did, I think we all got there. We went in all, you know, because Vegas is legal. So we went all to the weed store and we were like taking cabs. We get in the cab. And you know, the cabbies get like kickbacks from the weed places when you say, hey, I, I want to get some weed. Oh. So they take you to the ones they give them kickbacks and shit like that. Oh, damn. So we went to the Apple store of weed, right? <laughs> and it was literally like the Apple store of yeah. weed. I didn't want to buy it there. It felt too professional. I wanted to go find like a little bit more of a CD kind of place. Yeah, yeah. So we found this other place. It was like, uh, you know, like you have to, a little sliding thing. You got to show them your idea and yeah. they open the door. Yeah. And I've, I've always been more of an edible guy than a smoking weed. Mm-hmm. If anybody saw the last podcast, you understand why. Because <laughs> I just fucking, I'm not here anymore. You know what I mean? But, and we all just popped a, an edible and about an hour into the podcast. You're like, oh. All of us were just <laughs> laughing. And it was, it was a good time. It was a good time. It sounds like it. Darren's a good dude, man. He really is. Uh, yeah, I've, man, it's the, the craziest thing about growing up in all this kind of a world is finally meeting the people that you idolized as a growing up painter Uh or bike builder or whatever. When you finally are all of a sudden sitting in a room with the dude that you used to fucking flip through magazines and watch every thing that, you know, trying to learn everything from this guy. And Mm -hmm. now you're sitting there with him, you know, it's a weird turn of events, if you will. That just happened to me. Um, when I went to California a couple Mm -hmm. weeks ago. Uh, So I'm, like, I'm a musician. Yeah. I've been playing for 25 years. Maybe what do you play? Bass guitar. Nice. Uh, punk rock, you know? I've always been in the punk rock. But I went to California. Um, that's why I went there. Yeah. I took my mountain bike with me, rode Sedona and all that, <laughs> of course. But I went there because um, this guy in this band who I who is probably the biggest influence on me ever since 94 or 95. Wow. Um <clears throat> the drummer for this band called No FX. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. It's punk rock. If you don't know punk rock, you probably don't know who they are. But um, he he owns a surfboard company. Mm-hmm. And I went and we met through Instagram, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, and I was going to go to a show, a show there in California. Yeah. And while I was there, we talked about like me doing some surfboards for him. We like he set me up in his in his shop. For a few days, mm-hmm. like, I got to stay with him at his house. This is somebody, like, imagine, like, somebody you look up to, right, mm-hmm. for 25 plus 30 years. Yeah. Imagine somebody you idolize, and then all of a sudden, and, like, it's hard for me to, it's hard to do that to me now. Yeah. Dude, I was like, dude. I, I know party. what you mean. Did you party with Fat Mike? It wasn't Fat Mike. It was Smelly. <laughs> yeah, it was Smelly. It was a drummer. Did you party with him? No, I didn't, I didn't see any of those other guys. But the, I hung out. I know with what you mean. Um, I have a hard time. I, I don't have a hard time. I, I love it, but I become awkward. Dude. I become awkward. I'm like, I become that guy like, hey, I follow you. Uh, you know, that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, I never know how to fucking act. Like, like I I want to be a fan right now. I want to be, I, I want to tell you. This is my only you, chance here. I want to tell you how much you mean to me yes. in some super gay way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and, and at the I same think, time, they usually are. At, it's at a point now where they kind of mutually respect you for what you've created. Yes, and done with that's yourself. what it was. Yeah. And totally so, that. Yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird dynamic. Because like they were like geeking out. Oh man, that's so cool. What? what how did you do that? I'm like, dude. Are you Josh and me? So cool when you were doing that on that album. You know, like, you know, you try not Dude, to Dude, I, I, I can imagine, man. I have it's it. so cool. It was one of the coolest experiences of my life. And I stayed at his house. Yeah, that's got to be wild. Dude, I can't comprehend did he, that right now. So the, we've been talking about this a lot. Meeting your idols. Did he live up to it? Yes. He was. You, okay. know, they say, you know, they say, don't meet your idols. Exactly. Nope. Totally Good. cool. It was totally cooler than I could have ever expected. I would say that would be one of the few that, like, Especially like people like that. Yeah. They're so genuine. Like totally. it's worth meeting them. It's the but, weirdest yeah, thing. The other artists or people that you see, celebrities, it's like they have a whole different persona. It doesn't always work out that yeah. way. Yeah. 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 I would say ninety percent of the time it probably doesn't work out. 
like it did for me. Yeah, I mean, I think that because of the mutual respect thing, though, it, yeah, it makes him, yes. it puts him out of the element of I'm this guy that does this. Yeah. Now I'm yep. this guy that's interested in what you do. That's and right. It, and you kind of come together in a very mutual yep. Uh, yep. ground. That's exactly but that's, it. Dude, that's, that's a dream come true for anybody. It, it totally was. You know it what totally I mean? was. I mean, like, dude, like, this band is the biggest band. I mean, I don't know. It just... It was like, it just meant so much to me. I'm like, yeah. holy crap. And I like I was just like, you know, like I've been on TV even. Like, you know, like next to these other guys, they're pretty much celebrities. And like that's cool too. But this is like yeah. this is a way deeper place in my heart. Like oh, yeah. you know, it's just so cool. Especially ninety four. Dude, come on. That's like I know. It's like if I met, you know, ninety four, I'm thinking I probably was buying my first Snoop Dogg album. I think I like <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure I lost my virginity to like his music. <laughs> That'd be a good conversation. <laughs> yeah. What do you think the song was? It was the whole album. No. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of those songs are short, so that's good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I wonder which uh, verse it was. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing out. That's like good. Timmy the Turtle and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was Punk and Drublick. It was that. <laughs> yeah, there you that's go. That's the album, yeah. honestly. No, that's awesome, man. No, like, it was cool. It was really I, I cool. still, there's still a handful of guys in the motorcycle industry that like that I want to meet, but I kind of, I'm kind of scared to. But yeah, you know. Um, but other than that, like uh, sometimes it, it it just gets weird in general when you know someone's super famous. Yeah, and they're not they're not being weird or anything, but you're just like. You know, you're sitting next to him like a, uh, I think Xavier from uh, Buck Cherry. <laughs> yeah, they got a Grammy, so fuck off. Uh, <laughs> so Xavier's a fucking, he's a bike builder. He's a, he's a really badass dude and a very super. I could talk to this guy for hours. Mm. He's so he's so in tune with life. You know what I'm saying? Like you can gain a lot from talking to him. But I remember we were we were hanging out one day or we were doing something. Uh, we were in the same room together, and I was telling us like, you know what? Cause he dropped off a set of tins here once to paint, and he, he was up here talking, and he left, and I'm like, that guy could have texted Tommy Lee right quick, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and he would have responded or called like some I other. No, you think of it that way. Just so. kind of cr like that's always a weird like that uh -huh. that three or was it six degrees or separation or three degrees or I forget what the it's number six degrees. Of six degrees. Yeah. Like it just kind of blows my mind sometimes. Like the this dude had this whole fucking life. Being a rock star, yeah, and now he is so stoked to be in this, uh -huh. not this room, but like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. industry yeah, of yeah. custom painters and fabricators and yeah. and bikers and builders and all this crazy shit. I'm like, hey, man, to them, like, he might have thought that like certain builders were rock stars. I know, I know. So the first time I met him was when I went down to, to the shop to take the tens, right? Yeah, well, and then because I did some body work too, and he painted it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I see the bike complete. Like, it was really cool just experiencing that. But he's just so focused about getting that bike done because he had to get it done in, in the truck that night. That was for Daytona yeah. this year, yeah. And so he he was, like, all focused about it. I think um, they were trying to figure out a spacer for the wheel or something. Mm -hmm. Just him and, like, when we pulled it out and he lined it up in the sun and he's just staring at it. And then he gets thrown out and he's no, taking, cool. he, he's just so in awe over that bike. Yeah. yeah. Just, he just finished it. And that was like a really cool experience. Yeah. That. Like, like I knew who he was, but it's like, uh -huh. he wasn't all about that. He was all about that bike at yeah. that moment. So, yeah, That's yeah. I mean, cool. there's, there's certain, there's certain ones, man. Like I said, I mean, he, he was, a, uh, he's in the industry. So that was a way easier connection to be made. Uh -huh. But, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's still a handful of men that, you know, if I got a chance to sit down and have a conversation with him, I don't think I'd ever be able to be real. Uh, not real, but I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. I wouldn't be able Completely to relax. relay my yeah. what I want to talk about yeah. or what I want to bring up or, or ask or yeah. whatever. I'd just come off like a straight fucking fan, basically. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, I guess that's definitely still cool to for people when they, you know, like, oh, he digs what I do. Like some, you know, it's cool, but it's it definitely sets the tone for a different engagement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, if I run up to you, like, man, you were a fucking gas monkey, mm -hmm. dude. What was that like? Mm -hmm. What's Richard like? I already yeah. did that to you earlier, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but all these things, did like, it in a different way. It, it comes off like, oh, this this dude's mesmerized by 
like this one thing about me yeah. or about my life, uh-huh. not so much me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's how I sure. would take it. You know yes. what I mean? Yep. So, and of course I'm an overthinker, so I, I think too much into everything. Uh-huh. So. Uh, same. Same. <laughs> <clears throat> well, shit, man, I appreciate you doing this, dude. Yeah, it's yeah, been dude. fun, man. Yeah, uh, it was real fun. I, uh, I, yeah, I don't know why we haven't done this yet. I know. I know. I think the doors are starting to open up for me, the podcast here and the rest of Dallas Fort Worth. It's, Kind of been in the paint game for sure, and yeah. and uh, trying to. I've had Rick Dubstep on here before. Oh, cool! Uh, he's been on here a long time ago. It's like eighteen, twenty eighteen, I believe. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, we talked a lot about that name when you said the name. I'm like, I know that fucking dude. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, we did a podcast, dudes, dude. Yeah, awesome guy, really good dude. Yeah. But yeah, like we gotta, you know, we gotta do some more shit, dude. I need yeah. to go. I need to reach back out to Shorty. I haven't talked to Shorty in a couple, like two years now. So hang out with him again. Yeah. Well, cool. So everybody find you on Instagram at Tanner. Tanner 41 GB. It's all the same. Uh, yeah. One word. Yep. If you need some pinstriping, some badass tables made. Yeah. Uh, what else? You, I don't want to take any work from you, but, you know. No, nah, no, nah, dude. Take it all. I got too much. Damn it. We got too much. Share. We got to share out here. <laughs> all right.